por lo tanto.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In a minute, we will commence today's symposium. And this symposium is aired through the YouTube channel. So I ask you to turn your mobile phone into the vibration mode or turn it off. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We will have an international symposium on conservation and peaceful use of the TMZ area. Here, we will talk about how to protect and peacefully use the TMZ area. I'm the moderator of this first session. I'm Hang Eun-ju, working at the National Nature Trust. So today, we have a lot of distinguished, distinguished guests and uh, environmental activities. And before going to the presentation and main session, uh, we will. I have uh, some housekeeping note at 3.20, we will have the main Set main session of today's presentation, uh, today's symposium, and before that, we will uh, enjoy the video clip on and uh, some kind of the on the information of the TMZ and Green Belt, and the next room, the Vice Minister of Environment and the. Minister of Environment of Turigen uh, has uh, some dialogue. So after that, we will commence the today's symposium officially. S before going to the official session of today's symposium, we will have uh, two video presentation. And first, uh, the National Institute of Ecology uh, make a presentation on Korean demilitarized zone. And yesterday, we had uh, some kind of the political dialogue. And we talked about the politics and the policies of the uh, TMZ area. So I think that uh, those kind of the dialogue is reflected on this video presentation. And Cha Jun Il from the National Institute of Ecology will make a video presentation. <laughs> so I think that uh, it is a it is not clear for me to make a presentation with a mask with a, with mask or so the, am I to take off mask? So until now, the National Institute of Ecology has, has had a survey on ecosystems of the TMZ under the cooperation with the military service and tourist agencies. So in 2014, uh, National Institute of Ecology has had a survey since 2014 uh, when it was established, and also you have cooperated with the local residents and activists and environmentalists to have a survey on the ecosystem and ecology of the TMZ area. So for 10 minutes, I will make a video presentation on, on the, our study findings. So the I will make a focus on what is our direction on the survey and monitoring of ecosystem in TMZ area. And until now, so people think that the TMZ is surrounded by 
the barbed wires. However, a lot of lives live in TMZ, creating the sounds. And these sounds are very familiar to you. And the sounds is the crane. The sounds is created by the crane. And also, there are wider area than expected, and it takes about 1.5% of the total territory of Korea. However, it is a restricted area, so people cannot access this area. So it is a very important uh, ecosystem, and it's very unique. And this video is about musk deer. And you, this is the portraits of the walking musk deer. And its tears are very clear, visible, and also red crane cranes and white napped cranes. And they live there. And also, Asiatic black bears live in the TMZ. And three years later, and the baby bear grew. And musk deer, and also the fat minnow, black star fat minnow, and long tailed gorals, and ceiling capitates is a very important native species in Korea. So, a lot of species live in TMZ. And this slide shows that the animals found. Uh, in DMC, you can see that walking and moving balls, and there are several characteristics of the DMC. The western area, the western area consists of the crystal range and land, and it is uh, quite plain. So uh, this western area has a different ecological uh, characteristics, and central area consists of the mountains and rivers. It is uh, some kind of the mixture of the ecosystem. And this unit of the ecosystem is a very important habitat for uh, animals and plants. So we wanted to know more about this TMZ. And eastern area, this eastern area consists of the high mountains and it has a lot of snows. And please look at the photo on the right and it's a Kumgangsan mountain. So the photo shows that the road to Kumgang mountain and there is a lake called Kanmun Ho and this is, it has that the legend of uh, the fairy tales and the angels. So we cannot go to the mountain Kumgang now. However, in the future, after the reconciliation, we will visit there to know more about this um, TMZ. And it is the panoramic view from western area to central area and eastern area. And there are some hills on the plain area. And you are able to see the sea and the lakes. And you are able to see the lagoons as well. And it shows that uh, our activities on, on the DMG ecosystem survey. And we are collaborating with the uh, military service in the CCL area and also the TMZ. And we categorize the various topics and uh, topics of the ecosystem survey. And based on that, we analyzed our survey and we try to reflect our survey research to better policies. And the TMZ, in order to have an ecosystem survey in TMZ, we have to cooperate with the military service and local residents and government, local governments. And I think that this cooperation is essential for this ecosystem survey. So you can see that these areas and these areas is some study point and a research point, and we have had our researches on that area. And you visited here this morning, and these photos show us that our activities in ecosystem survey, and we did the ecosystem survey in a very restricted area. And this 
it shows uh, the fortress of our activities in ecosystem survey. And this is the TMZ biological survey result in about 800 species live in TMZ. And among them, uh, 20 species are endangered species. And this result, this survey is the result of the studies from 2009 to 2021. And we survey the flora and fauna, and we confirm some habitats. And we use that uh, unmanned uh, hidden camera. And so we are find uh, um, long-tailed corals and matins, and also we are able to find some curb of the Asiatic black bears. And of course, the study, the period is a little bit restricted. And we had a survey on the CCL area, and we divided this CCZ into five regions from 2015 to 2019. Then we divided this CCZ into five regions. And this is the result of the biological survey. So we have uh, about 44 endangered species living in this CCZ, and especially amphibians. And amphibians, uh, this CCZ is uh, really important to, to protect the amphibians and reptiles. And of course, there are quite many uh, species living in this CCZ. That's why it's uh, required uh, to conduct uh, more surveys in the future. And this result shows some kind of the re restricted result because that uh, we, our survey is restricted and restricted time and restricted period and restricted area. So I think that uh, we need to have more researches in the future. And there is, a, there is the number figure, 1.5%. That means that the TMZ takes just 1.5% of the total territory in Korea. However, in terms of the natural resources and ecosystem, uh, TMZ is the treasure of ecosystem. As I mentioned before, about 4,000 species live in uh, TMZ area. So based on that survey result, we are uh, developing the ecosystem thematic map. And this ecosystem thematic map uh, shows some kind of the analytic result of the species and their populations and distribution and habitats. And also, we have the mapping on our Korean native species. And also, we are doing the analysis on these native species. And this slide allow us to know where is the high population is and where uh, the low population is. So the, maybe you are able to compare the high population area and low populated area. And we also studied the flagship species, for example, musk deer, long-tailed gorals, and the white-napped cranes and red-crowned cranes. And we have uh, some kind of the simple uh, mapping on the Asiatic black bears, long-tailed gorals, and the cranes. So this slide is the point of uh, my presentation, we want to know TMZ more, and we want to protect TMZ more to pass down the biodiversity to our descendants. And uh, to this end, we need to make more studies and researches on TMZ area. So Asiatic black bears live in TMZ as shown by these photos and the same area. And you can see that the number. So maybe you uh, 
appreciated the red crane, <laughs> the red. You, maybe you watch it, the cranes today. <laughs> so the mother is working and child is following. What does it mean? What is the implication of this movement of the red crowned queens? So we have to think about the future. Uh, we want to make an ecosystem and environment for those birds to visit Korea and to stay in Korea. To this end, more researches are required. And we really hope that the local residents and activities and experts to go hand in hand to have more ecosystem surveys in the future. And also the UN command, UN command and the military service uh, support us a lot to have a survey. Thank you. Ned. Well, thank you so much for your presentation. So in a morning session, actually, we had uh, two different groups. So there is a video clip to share. And after that, we are going to connect to the Germany. So there is uh, one more video clip. The documentary Boom actually produced this. The greenness band, um, a landscape is well reflected in this video clip. So the past, present, and future of this place is well reflected in this video. And due to the pandemic situation, this uh, the video is not actually uh, covered the every part of the place, but I think um, the main messages can be delivered. So Dr. Yoon is not here, and I'd like to play the video with some explanations. So actually, there are many people who want to have um, the freedom in the Germany. So this the war collapsed um, in Germany. So that has turned into the Green Belt. That was the death land. And but that turned into the greeneries. And the green spot was uh, born after the collapse of the war that divided the Eastern Germany and Western Germany. So this is the Vajeran and the Tübingen and the border place. The, in the past, that was the border between two Germany. So it has been 30 years and the, after the collapse of the world, but you cannot, uh, you still see the trace of the past. So you can see the towers and the fence and also the places that had um, and the mines as well. You can see this, uh, they were built between two areas. So one village is uh, divided into two parts. So this is a place to teach history of Germany. Well, 30 years after the reunification of Germany, students aged 16 to 17 are still visiting here. So information and can be obtained through video and the internet. But when it is um, difficult to imagine the real situation in the past, these cultural heritages can help understanding. So in this respect, it is fortunate that many things have been preserved here. So the ones and the well divided villages have been connected. So now 
Then, well, we can see the ecological the corridor for the animals in this field. So he is the photographer. Photos say more than a thousand words. That is the way I am doing this. So when you stay in the same place and they say something new to be changed, nothing happens. So this is a greenness bond. This is the variable the petrol were made. It was um, once called Colon Road. There was a landmine next to that, so this was the only way people can take. Greenness Bond, the ecologically and historically, bears a great significance indeed. Because there is no large scale cultivation in this place, there are some really rare plant species. There are rare plants that grow here, such as orchid and surplus plants, and the ships live here and kept transferring seed as well. As you can see now, there are a lot of them. I can have a ranch here, and I am proud that it is so well maintained and preserved. So plants are thriving here and well maintained. So this is um, the great place regarding ecologically and historically. So Elbe River and the Harris National Park and Tringen, and they, uh, these are the important ecological parts. So let's move to the Harris National Park. So production team went up to the Harris National Park in order to capture the beauty and landscape there. So until today, there has been great ups and downs. So this place have to where the two different world were and also industrializations and that that um, the well damage the natures and the forest and also the well the animals like a uh, leopard and the wild cats and those uh, disappeared but when we see the green field now and the Harris National Park there are quite a solid flora and fauna so in order to achieve this, a lot of time required and also effort put into this place. In the 1990s, there was a national park only under mountain Blocken in East Germany. National park was created in Lower the Saxony as well, and two national parks were connected and merged. In integration was much more difficult than integration of East and West Germany. After several more years, the two national parks were eventually united in 2006, creating Germany's first national park to cross state borders. So this is the Elbe River located in the northern part in the separated the time. Elbe River was uh, the border, political border, that divide different ideology. And actually, this river is all located between the West Germany and East Germany. So back then, and it was not allowed to cross this river. But after unification, we can see the vitality of this river area. And green expand has been expanded to the European Green Belt, and 
this place um, has turned into the ecological place. So documentary film looked into Green Bond and produced these video clips. So watching this video clip, actually we have a great hope for the future of DMZ in Korea that delivers great implication to us. Thank you. So now, now I'd like to turn my microphone to the Dr. Chun Jae Kyung, the president of National Nature Trust, who will moderate the session. The mayor of Cheon Gun, please come forward and take a seat at front line. So the Minister of the Environment, Zig Esmond, please control your sound. So the minister, Chikesmund, please turn on your microphone. Aha, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. We missed the time. Uh, to uh, our Vice Minister, uh, Dr. Hong Jong-gi, uh, is waiting here uh, to uh, meet you. Yogi, Kaunde camera, Hong Chagan님을 좀 이렇게 됩니다. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 이제 DMG 이런. So now I will the comments that uh, our international symposium on conservation and sustainable use of the DMG officially. So. Before that, the Hong Jong-gi, Vice Minister of Environment, will deliver the opening address. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Vice Minister Hong jong -gi. I'm not quite accustomed to be seated, but the MC asked me to be seated, even while delivering the remarks, so I will deliver my talks here. So first of all, it is my great pleasure to be part of this event. And in the morning session, and I had the opportunity to look around the DMZ. So we look into the many parts of the DMZ. During the Korean War, and there um, they were uh, great sacrifice. So, well, actually there are the activities going on in order to find the remains from the Korean War. So, well, it would be great. And if we could invite all the participants for, to the deeper part of the DMZ, uh, but because um, well there is um, the military activities, we could not go deeper there. Uh, there is some um, the rice fatty in in this place, so we could have a great opportunity to see cranes in this chol one area. So watching that, I could feel the power of nature, and also uh, well, I realized that with a great um, the enthusiasm and the passions, and we can create a great green belt place just like um, the Grand Spant. 
So today we are having International Symposium of Conservation and Sustainable Use of TMZ. So taking this opportunity, I'd like to send my sincere thanks to the Cholwan County and the National Nature Trust. And uh, Yu Yeonjong, the mayor of Cholwan, is uh, here. So, well, actually, he has um, a great effort in order to preserve and conserve cranes and other natural species. So taking this opportunity, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude as well. Do we have um, the Minister Anya Chigasmund uh, from the Trengen? We wanted to have um, the virtual meeting, but we had uh, some connection issues. So that's why for the first time, I agreed to you here. And also, we have um, the, well, the director Uwe Rinken from BFN. So taking this opportunity, I'd like to extend my sincere gratitude as well. And the Professor Tai Bell is here. So thank you so much for sparing time out of your hectic schedule. So farmers and from Choran County are here as well. So thank you so much. So you are busy with your daily lives and daily activities, but still farmers in Choran area make a tremendous effort in order to preserve the crane and other nature. So thank you so much. And the DMZ, ecological, the civic groups, and also the natural, the nature trust are leading this conservation effort. Now, in the morning session and for the site visit, Ministry of Defense provides the great cooperation as well. So I'd like to extend my sincere gratitude to Ministry of Defense as well. In order to have an ecological study, we need to have a support from Ministry of Defense. So well, my sincere thanks and gratitude goes to the ministry. So military activity uh, going on in DMZ but uh, it is uh, very important to have a smart use of DMZ. So we need to have a further the collaborations between different ministries. So this year uh, marks the 68th anniversary of the creation of DMZ. After the Korean War with the Peace Treaty, the DMZ was um, decreated and also the DMZ and the civilian control zone were created after the end of the Korean War. Actually, the human footstep has been prevented due to this and so the nature, the ecology has been well preserved starting from 2015 and 2016. And we started the, well, the nature research in this and the area, the TMZ. The TMZ takes only 1.13% of total territory. And when it comes to the flora and the fauna, it takes up about 16%. So it has um, the, well, the cranes and in the Imjin liver area and also well it has a great habitat as well that's why um, the, we have um, these and the well species as well so cranes and black faced spoon bears and the gorillas and can be seen in this place because of the huntings the number of important uh, the species have gone down dramatically the TMZ actually divide the two nations on the Korean Peninsula, but DMZ serve as an ecological corridor for the animals here. And it has um, the great ecological values and historical values, so it is important to have a well conservation and preservation effort, but still we face a great difficulties indeed. Uh, for the sake of the well well beings for this, the local communities, we should think about the smart use of DMZ and also the peaceful the tourism programs can be developed in this area as well in order to support the livelihood of the local citizens here. So we need to have um, the mid term and the long term plans. So the before unification and after unification for those time we need to have our full preparations. And in this um, the seminar, the cases of the Tringan and Greenspan can be introduced. So actually, we had opportunity to look into the beauty of this place. Um, 
in 1990s with the unifications, and there was uh, some the issues regarding land ownerships, so that faced um, the great dangers of damages. But after a few the years, Greenness Bond policy was established in order to establish the Green Belt. So the well national wide conservation effort was made. That's why this is the place for the historical the tourism and ecological tourism making contributions to the local economy. So looking at this uh, well case, we need to think about the wise use of DMZ. If we do not have a full preparations, soon after unification, DMZ can be damaged soon after. So this uh, seminar will be a great opportunity to collect wisdom from the experts from home and abroad. So the localities and the local citizens and experts and media uh, from many different perspectives, we can have um, discussions and present Based on your insightful ideas, we can develop future policies that will have an immense help for our future policy. Once again, I'd like to express, express my sincere gratitude to all the participants. We are nearly at the end of year. I hope you have a happy year, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Minister. A uh, pleasure to introduce our excellent speakers. First of all, may I introduce Minister Anya Jigesmund. Uh, speak out, please. We can hear you. Good morning. I hope you can hear me too. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Please assume the vice minister. Yeah, this is our vice minister. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. 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 It's a great honor for me to see you virtually. Thank you. I would like to uh, introduce uh, Professor uh, Dr. Kai Probel. Yeah. And uh, so the speaker, yeah, uh, uh, director, uh, Uberiken, Dr. Uberiken. Yes, hello from Germany and good morning to everybody. Many thanks for inviting me for this uh, workshop or symposium, as you call it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, next, uh, our discussant. Uh, UNEP Asia Consultant, Ms. Marion. Hello, everyone. 안녕하세요. 정말 반갑습니다. <laughs> it's good to see you. Uh, we 계속 진행을 하겠습니다. Now we will go to the next uh, speaker, and Lee Hyun Jung, the mayor of Cheonggun, will deliver the welcoming address. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lee Hyun Jung, the mayor of Cheonggun. So I'm really grateful to all participants who visit Cheonggun despite your hectic schedule, including Hong jung -gi, Vice Minister of Environment, Anya ji Minister of Environment of Churingan State, Kellare Nader, Agricultural Counselor from Dutch Embassy in Korea, and other distinguished guests. Thank you for coming here. As the border area, Choron, was designated as a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve in 2019 for its ecological value. And the next year, in the following year, in 2020, 
UNESCO Hantangang Geo Park was enlisted, covering 398 kilometers for its archaeological, ecological, and historical values. Cheolonggun and other four areas and Gangwon-do province cooperated to implement the project of a smart green city, which is a Green New Deal project of the Ministry of Environment, building a consensus with local residents about the importance of an ecological environment. The implementation of international and national projects is the basis for sustainable development of a TMZ area. Now, it's time to conserve ecosystems of TMZ whose values are already approved by nominations of UNESCO Biosphere Reserve and UNESCO Hantangang Geo Park and to improve the concept of ecology and environment as the symbol of communities and to achieve local development. Based on this, we will use the clean image of the TMZ to discover and develop tourism resources in various fields, such as branding of special products, forest culture, ecology, security, history, and culture. If so, we will revitalize the local economy through economic revitalization and creation of new jobs. And today, we will talk about the future of the local residents living in Choron area. Once again, I'd like to express my deepest gratitude to those attend the International Symposium for Preservation and Sustainable Use of TMZ area, physically and virtually. And I hope you will be healthy and happy with your family. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for delivering your remarks. And from the Turingen, we are going to invite Minister Anya Jigesmund. Uh, Minister Anya Jigesmund, yeah, uh, your keynote speech. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> dear Vice Minister, dear Dr. Hong, dear Mr. Lee, Dear Dr. Chun, Dr. Rieken, Professor Fröbel, dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the kind introduction and especially for your invitation. It's an honor to join you this morning. For me, it's morning because it's almost nine o'clock in the morning. And please forgive me when I say um, Young has you. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, because my my Korean um, spelling is, uh, as you can uh, realize, uh, not good. Because um, so I'm very um, thankful that Marie Young Strucker is joining us. So good morning from Effort. It's almost nine in the morning here, and it's pretty quiet out there because all pupils and students are on autumn vacation and man, many of them maybe are going to hike with their parents along the former border along the green belt today it's still astonishing for me that this is possible because for decades the iron curtain divided europe into East and West. It was an impenetrable barrier. Nature, however, benefited from the fact that the border area was largely separated. After the peaceful revolution in 1989, it was possible over the past years and decades to launch a process of cross-border cooperation along the entire length of the European Green Belt. Together with international partners, 
we improve cooperation on nature conservation, encourage sustainable regional development, and overcome historical divisions. Dear sir and madams, this all takes time and it needs partners. So thank you again for having the opportunity to talk to you today. In June of this year, I met Gumhop Kim. He escaped from North Korea at the age of 20. He was part of a Korean film team that came to Turingia to document the story of the Green Belt. We talked about the German un reunification and seeking for peace, about, about the very difficult process. And I have sensed the desire to protect the Korean DMZ as an area where nature has made remarkable recovery. It's an honor to share our German and especially my Turingian experience today with you. Three years ago, we came together in Turingia for the 10th Pan European Greenbelt Conference. And it was a pleasure to welcome Dr. Chun and Ms. Marion from South Korea. We've met at the Wartburg Castle in Turingia only a few kilometers from the former German-German border. I remember when I was there as a child in the 80s with my parents. I was looking out from the very same castle at the landscape below. A tear on the horizon, lined with barbed wire and peppered with sentry towers, cut through the landscape. It wasn't only in Turingia, fences and minefields separated people, families all over Europe. And I thought I would never have the opportunity or the chance to get to the other side. What a great possibility to do so today. Nature didn't care. Between the wire mesh and the heavily loaded weapons of the border troops, many plant and animal species were free to flourish on the death strip. Today, 31 years after the fall of the Berlin Wall, the death strip has turned into a lifeline. And I'm st still thankful for the courage of so many for the process of the peaceful revolution and all um, uh, thankful to all of them um, who took their part in that. When you walk at the uh, Kolonnenweg or Petrol Road in English, along the former border between Thuringia and Hessen, Bavaria or Lower Saxony today, you will discover an incredible amount of biodiversity. To give you some examples, large blue bellflowers, higher than average numbers of plant and animal species on the red data list live there, as well as countless others that fortunately don't need to be on the list. You will see goats, sheep, you saw them on the movie, and cattle, maintaining the precious green landscape as far as the eye can see. The former system which had the aim of preventing GDR citizens from escaping to freedom seems barely imaginable now. But the peaceful revolution is part of our history, so is the nature treasure. I talked with the people who live at the Green Belt. They shared their memories and fates with me. And I found out that these people also want to preserve the Green Belt and that goes for the nature conservationists as well, who have been working for the preservation of this unique natural treasure for almost 32 years, or even more than that, Dr. Rieken, Professor Fulbe, more than 32 years, I guess. All together, this has encouraged me to protect this monument of nature and history for the foreseeable future. Ladies and gentlemen, the Turingian Green Belt is 763 kilometers long, 763 
this is approximately twice the distance from the main capital Seoul to Busan in south of Korea. This is the largest section of Germany's Green Belt and that is 763 kilometers of an inter-German history, each and every one of them. These figures illustrate that Thuringia has a special duty to protect the nature and to remember the horrors of the GDR uh, dictatorship. Thuringia has been a supporter of the Green Belt from the very beginning, but it was the German NGO BUND, Kai Fobel is going to speak later on that, which had already invited conservationists from the East and the West to a meeting in December 1998, the year of the peaceful revolution. The response was overwhelming. 400 people came to discuss the question, how can we protect the natural resources along the former border? This is when the idea, the name Green Belt, Grünes Band, Green Belt came into being, the first all German nature conservation project. That was the beginning of uh, many years of lobbying and Thuringia campaigned right from the start. When I have started in Thuringia as a minister, which was in year 2014, many areas were already owned by the federal state of Thuringia and many talks had been taken place. Nevertheless, it took us some years to pass the law on the Green Belt as a nature, national natural monument. The Thuringian Parliament passed designation of the Green Belt Thuringia as a national natural monument only in 2018. In full awareness of our responsibility for the preservation of the Green Belt as a living testimony of recent history, and also in appreciation of the work of many full time and voluntary workers, as well as committed proprietors and those who benefit. The legislative initiative came from my Ministry of the Environment because it was a Herzensangelegenheit. I guess Marion Strücker is going to translate that later to you. <laughs> and it can be traced back to the coalition agreement of the three parties ruling in Thuringia since 2014. It took time, but it is a Herzensangelegenheit. It was successful in the end. Let me make that very clear. This wouldn't have been possible without our partners, the Nature Conservancy Foundation Thuringia, who owns 42% of the areas of the National Nature Monument. And there, in between eight supervisors along the path of the 70, 63 kilometers, take care of the areas. It took us a lot of talks with mayors, with people who live along the Green Belt. Um, we had lots of talks and meetings over there. I spent lots of time in the area to convince the people that they benefit by having the National Natural Monument. And it's worth it, I promise you. It's the first national natural monument in Germany with such a massive expanse of land. An important part of the German and European wildlife corridor will be secured by that. It should also be mentioned at this point that the federal state of Saxony-Anhalt, which borders Thuringia to the north, has declared its section of the Green Belt a national natural monument as well other federal states are going to follow. The Green Belt Thuringia embodies an important section of German history and it is a crucial part of an international wildlife corridor system. The Green Belt Thuringia is about bringing three parties together, nature conservation, 
the culture of remembrance and regional development. To achieve this, it's necessary to exchange experiences and walk in each other's shoes. I'm very pleased that we are here today, cross-border and transnational networking is more important than ever for the preservation of nature. I would like to encourage you, Dr. Hong, Mr. Li, Dr. Chun, you have support, support each other on the very special path for peace and nature conservation. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you for having the possibility to talk to each other on this important project, the Green Belt. And thank you for having the possibility also to exchange experiences. Thanks. Your English pronunciation uh, is very articulate. So uh, it is easy to hear. Yeah, thank you. Uh, notwithstanding, uh, your very busy schedule. Uh, thank you for your uh, joining our international symposium. Yeah. I wish and uh, our uh, Vice Minister, uh, Dr. Hong, uh, also uh, wishing uh, our uh, sharing um, the experience and the knowledge about the Green Belt or DMG uh, could be continued later. Yeah. Uh, later, uh, our uh, Vice Minister, uh, Dr. Hong, uh, and uh, Minister uh, Anya Jigesmund uh, will have another uh, their schedule. So uh, we uh, will adjust uh, our uh, seat for uh, during a uh, short time. Hong uh, Chagan님, 혹시 uh, goodbye, say goodbye 하시겠습니까? 네, 네, 네. 그러면 어, 저희 자리 정돈하고요. So now we will adjust our sitting a little bit. Uh, the vice minister he has another schedule, so he will leave, and then we will adjust the sitting a little bit. So we will resume the session at four o'clock sharply.
So today, the translation service is available. Please set the channel number one. So we will resume the session again. So uh, now I'd like to invite the distinguished guest Jo Jo Gyu-sun, the new president of the national the institute. Uh, National Institute of the Ecology, and then he will deliver a one-minute speech. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jo Do Sun, uh, the new president of the National Institute of Ecology. So the TMZ area is uh, so important to ecosystem, and also the NIE has a lot of interest in uh, TMZ and its ecosystems. Personally, I also have interest in uh, the TMZ area. So uh, until now, the NIE has uh, surveyed the ecosystem of the uh, TMZ area uh, from 2009 2008 uh, we had a uh, researches on ecosystem of the NIE, uh, but uh, it was uh, suspended. And after that, mm, about two years ago, uh, the uh, NIE also started uh, to the make a ecosystem survey on uh, TMZ area. So the, those kind of the studies will be accumulated to have excellent ecosystem res uh, study result. And also we have uh, some researches on uh, local economies. And the Minister of the Environment of Turingen uh, mentioned that uh, three states cooperated to designate in those areas as a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. So likewise, the Gangwon-do also uh, has a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve covering uh, several local government. So the various local uh, stakeholders involved in the decision-making uh, process to have uh, some kind of the policies for cooperation. Thank you. So the, uh, as a new president of the NIE has a very important promise to so today uh, now we I have uh, I will introduce the three speakers and first the Hong the the director of the Ministry of Environment will make a presentation. And the presenter is you, the director of the Conservation Department of the Ministry of Environment. Please welcome him with a big hand. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the manager of the environmental policy uh, department of the Ministry of Environment. So as you know, well, I'm a public servant. The presentation of the public servant is the most boring. So, but uh, I think that I wanted to skip uh, some kind of the overlapping uh, contents, but uh, I think that I wanted to make uh, some uh, point on the government policies. So the, today I will make a presentation on ecosystem status of TMZ area and how to conserve it. And I skip this one. And I think that uh, this content and uh, this slide has been talked a lot until now. So for your background knowledge, DMG area is the treasure of ecosystem with a high conservation values because human activities were prohibited for about 70 years. And from 2008-2009, uh, the ecosystem survey was conducted and uh, it shows that the 
Uh, TMZ is a home to 887 species, including 20 endangered species. But those survey was suspended for more than 10 years. And then the NIE this year started to make uh, ecology uh, surveys on TMZ areas by using unmanned cameras or the uh, cutting edge devices. And the uh, Vice Minister of Environment uh, has uh, some questions. So this kind of the ecosystem survey will be suspended in the future, uh, depending on the political relations between to, between South Korea and North Korea. So yes, it's uh, true. But uh, actually, the National Institute of Ecology also studied the ecosystems of areas over CCL uh, for six years from 2015 to 2020. So I think that uh, areas over CCL and the TMG area shall be uh, studied for its ecosystems together depending on the law and regulations. So but uh, I think that uh, if the TMG survey is not possible, but despite the situation, we will conduct the ecosystem survey of areas over CCL. So uh, we will continue to have uh, ecosystem survey on uh, areas over CCL, even though we are not able to do the survey in TMZ area because of the political issues. Anyhow, we are preparing a lot of researches and the surveys uh, for areas over CCL. And as you know well, the National Institute of Ecology also studied ecosystems of areas over CCL for six years from 15 to 2020. And uh, it analyzed the survey result and published a study report in June. And it confirmed that 4,315 species live in these areas over CCL with 44 endangered species. So it shows that the biodiversity is similar to national parks. So the conservation value in the areas over CCL is very high. And this is that the, this is that the the nature reservation area. The DMZ area was designated as the nature reservation area in 1998. The Nature Environment Conservation Act stipulates that to conserve and manage the DMZ, it's designated as a nature reservation area for two years from the date on which the jurisdiction belongs to the ROK. That means that the DMZ is, below, is as the nature reservation area now? No. Now, the TMJ is not the nature reservation area, as I mentioned before. For two years from the data on which the jurisdiction belongs to ROK, that means that the TMJ is protected legally only for two, year, two years after reunification. And also, according to the law, uh, the Ministry of the Environment uh, shall make a master plan for st or the strategies to protect the nature reservation area. But it is not mandatory law. So I think that the, what is the reason of this and wha what is the reason of this law and why people, the Ministry of Environment, develop this law. So maybe I think that the uh, Ministry of Environment has less, uh, had less expectation uh, for reunification. So that's why the Ministry of Environment said the two years from the day, date on which the jurisdiction belongs to ROK. But uh, anyhow, the law is uh, has uh, some problems now. The Ministry of Environment has a very less power to do something in this TMJ area according to the law. And also in 2011, ROK 
Uh, so the UNESCO Biosphere Reserve were designated in this area. The UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, UNESCO Geopark, Ramsar Site, and UNESCO World Heritage are four major categories of the internationally pro uh, designated protected areas. So the UNESCO Biosphere Reserve was uh, some kind of important issues in this area. So the UNESCO Bio Reserve was designated in uh, 2019, but it has a long history. In the 2001, the former president announced a joint application for DMZ Transboundary Biosphere Reserve. But after that, the ROK government proposed a joint application to DPRK. The plan covers the area, the entire DMZ and CCL areas of South Korea. UNESCO also tried to coordinate between two Koreas, but DPRK refused the proposal, so it failed. But in 2011, ROK alone apply for UNESCO Biosphere Reserve covering the areas between MDL, Military Demarcation Line, and NLR, Northern Limit Line, including Paju Gosong. And so please look at the photo here. The area between Military Demarcation Line and NLL and also some border areas. But uh, unfortunately, back then, the Charon Gun, the residents opposed to joining this application. This proposal also failed because of the objection of North Korea. And back then, there was uh, some coordinating committee uh, says that the North Korea opposed uh, the applications for UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. So, the back then, the North Korea uh, said that there was no uh, stamp or the signature of the UN command. So be, uh, on that excuse, the North Korea opposed this uh, proposal for UNESCO BR, so it failed. But uh, finally, in 2019, Yeoncheonggun and Gangwon province apply for the UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, which covers only border areas without TMZ. So at first, the South Korea apply for the UNESCO PR, including entire TMZ area, but the North Korea opposed failed. And after that, ROK apply for the UNESCO PR covering the areas belonging to the South Korea in TMZ, but the North Korea opposed it, it failed. And finally, the South Korea government apply for the UNESCO PR only covering the border areas without TMZ, and the PR were uh, designated. So yesterday, many people talk about these PR issues, and also uh, the, some people ask why uh, the master plan to protect and conserve the ecosystems in TMZ. And of course, uh, that uh, government conducted the ecosystem survey on TMZ areas and also the other border areas. But uh, this kind of the survey uh, is conducted to uh, to be an for another purposes. So the anyhow, the Ministry of Environment made a plan to conserve ecosystems of TMZ areas. And also, the government made a plan including database of land use, ecological survey, and designation of PR. And also, the, it conducted an eco survey from uh, 2008 to 2009 and studied the damaged areas of TMZ and set up a plan of a cadastral record. And in the government made a plan including management of biodiversity hotspot such as wetlands and Pekdu Dekan. And also the government, the Ministry of Environment has 
a lot of interest is in TMZ area. So the Ministry of Environment has a plan 20 year uh, environment protection plan and this plan stipulates the TMZ areas as the core eco axis and integrate into the national major plans such as master plan on international national land and environment. It also shows the policy directions to designate protected areas in Korea. So and also there is uh, some act and now I'd like to tell you recent development. So some lawmakers proposed uh, quite a few bills to protect and conserve the TMGs. But those kind of things failed until now. So anyway, uh, the Ministry of Environment tried to designate the TMG area as a national park but the app but the proposal failed and also the government tried to uh, vitalize that the tourism in this TMZ or the other areas but uh, those kind of the plans were not implemented so i don't know why this kind of the plans were not implemented exactly, but uh, I think that the Ministry of Development uh, developed this kind of the plans, but uh, I think that uh, there is uh, some kind of the um, conflicts between uh, the Ministry of Environment and the Ministry of Land Development and others. And also, it is sweet depending on, it changes it depending on the inter-Korean relations. So yesterday, we also talked about the current status of the TMG. The Ministry of Administration and former, uh, former Minister of the Administration proposed a bill called the Act for Conservation and Peaceful Use of the TMZ. But this act, um, other, uh, some ministries like uh, Ministry of Co uh, Culture opposed this bill. And also the Ministry of the Environment opposed this bill too. So anyway, this act for conservation and peaceful use of the TMZ uh, is in pigeonhole nowadays. So as I mentioned before, the nature reservation area is a big issue in terms of the law and regulations. So the TMZ is a nature reservation area, area only for two years after reunification. And there is no end regulations on TMZ after the legal status expires. So the Ministry of Environment wants to act, act for to revise the Act for Conservation and Peaceful Use of the TMZ. So you are able to see the, this Act. So there is uh, some plans. And the uh, Ministry of Unification shall make a plan, five-year plan for conservation and peaceful use of the TMZ. And it is a conflict between um, this act. I think that uh, uh, John, the lawmaker uh, proposed a bill called the Act for the Conservation and Peaceful Use of the TMZ. However, uh, the Ministry of Unification uh, shall establish the five year plan for the for in terms of the DC Act. So that's why it's an, another issue. And also this Act for Conservation and Peaceful Use of the TMZ uh, never review and revise the concept of the nature reservation area. So that's why we think that uh, this Act is not uh, for conservation. This Act is for development of the TMZ. So that's why the Ministry of Environment opposed this Act. 
So anyhow, we are collecting the ideas and opinions about this act. So actually, the Ministry of Environment, uh, it has also its own law, and the Ministry of Unification has its own law. But uh, we have to combine uh, the strong points of the DC Act and that Act to have uh, better acts. So any in that situation, uh, the DC Act is in pigeonhole nowadays. It is uh, uh, it is a holding, and there is no more uh, progress to pass this act for conservation and peaceful use of the TMZ. And also, uh, there is uh, some kind of the in some kind of the um, some kind of the activities for its own uh, ministry. So the Ministry of Unification tried to strengthen its power in terms of the TMZ. And I think that the Ministry of the Environment is open uh, to managing and conserving the TMZ area. However, the Ministry of Unification, I think, uh, wanted to increase its power on these TMZ issues. So that's why there is uh, some conflicts between the ministries. So it is also another uh, issues in that uh, legal problem, legal issues. And then this one is that the uh, TMZ Peace Road. And we, uh, we visited here today, so I'm going to skip this one. And now I'd like to talk about the policy directions. I think a comprehensive and long-term policy is required to make the balance between ecosystem conservation and peaceful use. So actually, there are a lot of opinions on this TMZ. And some people really want to preserve uh, this TMZ, and other people really want to develop TMZ after reconciliation. And also, some people uh, try to put development, development pressure on this TMZ area. So the, each person has its, his, has its own idea, and each person has a different ideas on, on this TMZ issue. So there is no government plan, and there is no government policy on this TMZ. So many people are talking about the uh, TMZs, and we have to protect it, and others say we have to develop it. But uh, there is no consensus until now. So uh, sometimes I'm really concerned about the future of the TMZ. I'm a public officer, but uh, to be frank, I'm uh, really concerned about the government policy on this TMZ because there is no big, big picture. There is no big picture on this TMZ. And I think that uh, some people have uh, some kind of the plan, but uh, those some plans are not feasible and some plans, some plans are not reliable. But uh, anyway, to make a decision on that, we have to have the basic information. And with the basic information, we are able to make a right decision and the right selection. So I think that uh, consensus is required. So I think that the National Institute of Ecology also uh, play a pivotal role to create it, uh, consensus. So I think that uh, this kind of the efforts to make a consensus must go on. But the another issue is that after the development of the policy, and then next, what? So I think that we need to make the balance between ecosystem conservation and peaceful use. So we need to establish a space management system for DMZ areas. And also, I think that a lot of stakeholders must think about 
uh, the direction of the TMZ in the future. Uh, so we have to think about the future direction of the TMZ. Is it development or is it preservation? And also we have to make a consensus. And I wanted to talk about the strength and the efforts to protect the areas with the high ecosystem values. In this regard, it's necessary to expand the nationally and internationally designated protected areas. And the Ministry of Environment utilized the PES system, the Payment of Ecosystem Service, which has been implemented since 2021. So the system has been updated. But the preparation and the founding, um, the foundation for PES system is not strong. So the, some people cannot understand the benefits from this PES system because I know that the Ministry of Environment uh, couldn't prepare uh, for introduction of the PES system well. So anyway, the Ministry of Environment has uh, made an effort for PES system for one year and some people cannot distinguish the PES system and the biodiversity contract system to pay some kind of the compensations to farmers who increase uh, the biodiversity. But uh, I think that the PES system shall be implemented in border areas and uh, the damaged areas. So the National Institute of the Ecology tried to uh, analyze the PES system across the country. So I think that uh, NIE must make more efforts to uh, research on the PES system in an exact way. That means that the uh, uh, PES system uh, is a PS system can be implemented in a different way depending on different area. So I think that uh, we need to have uh, some uh, researches. So NIE has a huge burden, I believe. So the NIE make more researches on, on the foundation for PS system. So we will do our best to, to uh, support this PS system and to systemize this PS system so that it takes a deep root in our society. So there are some areas, border areas with high uh, ecosystem values and to protect these areas with high ecosystem values, we are able to utilize the PES system and uh, we will turn, convert those systems into um, the integration way. So Ministry of Environment uh, is a little bit lagging behind. So the Ministry of Environment cannot satisfy uh, the, the demands of the local residents in border areas, but the uh, Ministry of Environment will do. And third, I think that uh, we need to lay the legal foundations for conservation of a TMZ ecosystem. To this end, we will revise the provisions of a nature reservation area. The law says for two years after the date when its jurisdiction belongs to ROK, we have to review its feasibility. And also, we have to lay the legal ground for the act. And maybe Maybe uh, we don't know when reunification is achieved exactly, but we have to prepare ourselves for the reunification. And some people strongly argue that the act on conservation and uh, use of the TMZ is required. And of course, there are several uh, relevant departments of the government uh, 
which covers this act. So the, I strongly believe that the um, government agency and the government ministries cooperate. So the Ministry of Environment and the Ministry of the Unification must cooperate. But uh, until now, the each ministry tried to increase uh, its own power rather than cooperation. So I strongly believe that we have to increase the cooperation. And also the UN comment uh, is an important partner. So the UN comment and military service is also an important partner. So we have to increase the cooperation with them. And also we need to restore the ecosystem disturbing areas. And I think that governance is so important. So many people say that governance is important. And some people say that the government make a, a policy which is not uh, which is not reliable and it is not converting to the reality. So they argue that the action is required. Yes, right. I accept that kind of the blaming. But uh, I think that uh, if the outside opinions are strong and uh, a lot of people argue uh, that uh, government and especially the Ministry of Environment to, to do something, in the case is the Ministry of Environment to start to work. So that's why I think that the stakeholders are so important. Uh, some people say that we need to expand the PES payment uh, ecosystem service. So more and more people talk about the PES system. The government, the Ministry of Environment, implemented the PES system. So I think that the civil society and the uh, stakeholders are very important to, to call on the government to, to do something or make the government to, to do something. Thank you. So the thank you for your presentation. So the yesterday we shared the information on the ecosystem survey research conducted by the National Institute of the Ecology. So the later we will talk about these issues during the panel discussions. So now I'd like to invite the next speaker. We are going to invite Director Uwe Riken from German, the Federal Agency for Natural Conservation. So natural conservation and the nuclear uh, the well projects actually done under the same umbrella. And Director Uwe Riken had visited Korea. And back then, we did not have opportunity to go into the MZ, but we had um, um, the uh, visitation a uh, visit to the observation towers. So I believe the director has a different understanding about the MZ. So this green belt used to be the Death Valley, but that turned into the green space. So, well, we are going to invite Director Uveriken to hear about this. Director Uveriken, yeah, uh, your uh, presentation, please. Um, yes, one question. Shall I start the presentation from here? Yes, uh, uh, you can. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I. I will try it. Um, can you see the presentation? Yeah, uh, over uh, the presentation uh, models. Not, uh, yeah. In the PC, we can see your presentation. However, uh, in our screen, uh, it is impossible. Uh, wait a minute, please. One minute, please.
그거는 다른 다른 파일입니다. So that is a different file. Please upload his presentation file to the screen. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Uh, please again, your presentation. We can see yes, your uh, file. Yes, thank you very much. I, I have an echo. echo. I uh, don't know the reason for that. I, I and also see not the complete presentation on the, on the screen. Uh, Dr. Uh, Uberiken, uh, please, uh, uh, your uh, screen, uh, uh, please make a shot of your screen. Too large, so uh, we cannot see the whole. Yes, we can. I Hoxi. So, from the herb side, can you share that presentation file? Actually, he is uh, sharing that. Herr Riken, um, wollen Sie das selbst zeigen oder ich dachte über Korea? Ich habe auch ein Echo. Um, ne, ich weiß nicht, kann es von, von der koreanischen Seite hm. geschlagen? So, Dr. John, so Korea is the hub, right? So, please present the file there. Uh, actually, there is an echo. Could you adjust the sound, please? So, could you deliver this message in German? So, could you explain the situations? So, I'm not sure whether the echo is from our side or your side. So, Director Uveri Ken. Um, want to know whether it's possible for Korea to uh, upload the file. Okay. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> So the sound, and I believe the a translation audio has some issues. So the English channel, translation English channel has the echo. The Korean channel is fine, but English channel has an echo. So please adjust the audio volumes there. Can you see the screen? Okay. Uh, this yes, is no, our our pile, uh, mixed Korean and the German. Yes, I can see it. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, we can okay. page it down. Mm. So uh, okay. you we you say the sign. Okay, we will we will try it. And I don't have an echo anymore. So uh, yes, please, uh, dear uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear Dr. Hong, dear Mr. Lee, dear Mr. Chun. I'm uh, very sorry that uh, there had been some technical problems in presentation in presenting my file, and uh, we will try it here. They are a little bit uh, full due to the two languages on it. 
So I will talk a little bit about policy and experience of German green belt and implementation, some implications or some ideas uh, for the Korean DMZ. Next slide, please. Oh, it's one too much. One back, please. Thank you. I have uh, my agenda covers five points. First of all, I will give you a brief introduction into the German green belt. Uh, second point will be some eco uh, something about the ecological values. Then I will give you some examples for the implementation of the green belt in Germany. Um, I have a special chapter on experiencing green belt and finally some conclusions for the DMZ. Next slide, please. So that's the situation we had uh, beginning from 1962 uh, until the reunification. Uh, you can see uh, some uh, 1,400 kilometers long, the borderline in contrast to the Korean DMZ, all the border construction, fences, mines, etc., are only uh, located on the eastern part. From the western part, you had no problem uh, to uh, go and, uh, up to the border, to the borderline. It was very dangerous to cross the border indeed. So next slide, please. Yes, what we uh, try to implement or what was being recognized after the reunification is uh, that uh, along this former borderline, a huge biological diversity had survived. So next slide, please. Yes, and uh, here are some examples of the different ecosystems where you can find along the green belt. It starts at the Baltic seashore. Then we have a lot of uh, lakes, especially in northern Germany. Uh, the big river Elbe forms part of the border also in northern Germany. And then on the uh, pictures below, you have some, some ideas uh, of the shape of the green belt in the more southern part. Next slide, please. Next slide. So here are some examples of the biodiversity that can be found. It starts by big eagles, for example, or the European otter. We have a lot of bird species, but there is a, a huge diversity, especially in insects, spiders, and uh, uh, plant species as well. Next uh, slide, please. Yes, what's uh, the overall target or strategy? We want to protect the entire run of the German green belt, first of all, as a habitat for threatened plant and animal species, as a refuge for endangered ecosystem, and as part of the national ecological network. That are the ecological goals or the goals from the nature conservation point of view. Next slide, please. Uh, but uh, it is also part of the national natural heritage, uh, which is very important um, political strategy and implementation activity of the German federal government. And there is a discussion ongoing starting from Thuringia, but also from the German NGOs to implement the Green Belt as a World Heritage Site, as a mixed site, uh, nature and culture. Next slide, please. And uh, that is the next very important point. For, from, for, from our point of view, the Green Belt is also a living memorial on the younger European history and a place for nature experience and sustainable development. So we have three general targets. It's nature conservation on a high level. It is preservation as a living monument and uh, to develop the green belt as an area of sustainable development with a main focus on tourism. Next slide, please. Yes, the implementation. The first, the most important uh, thing is that you need to have the political support. We have heard it. Uh, from the speaker, uh, we, we just heard that that is, uh, seems to be a huge problem in Korea, that there is no uh, common understanding and no common targets between the different 
ministries. In Germany, we had from the very beginning, we had uh, strong political support uh, from, yeah, uh, most time all parties. You can see here on the right side, Minister, uh, Pri um, Chancellor Merkel, uh, who, uh, for example, strongly supported uh, the green belt idea. So second point, uh, what we are focusing on is legal protection. You have heard something about it from Minister Siegesmund this morning. I will uh, come back to this later on. We want to integrate it into the green belt into a national ecological network and uh, closing existing gaps. Uh, the next instrument we use are large scale nature conservation projects. I will not be able to go into detail in terms of this instrument because that uh, would uh, be a, a different presentation and uh, also very, Im very important uh, public relation activities and uh, as a umbrella about all these activities there is uh, required a strong cooperation between the federal government the ngos but also all the local and regional administrations next slide please yes uh, some ex uh, one example uh, dealing with the political support it is the coalition agreement of the coalition starting 2009 and uh, they said we are protecting the German green belt along the former inner German border as natural monument and want to invite the development of a European green belt. Both things are on the way and uh, we will hear about it later on. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, natural, national natural heritage, it's a long story. In the year 2000, there were, have been still some 11,000 hectares of the green belt owned by the German federal government. 2003, the German Minister of Finance offers this land to the German federal estates, Bundesländer, for nature conservation activities. Uh, in the same year, concrete negotiations started, and 2005, this green belt land was included in a huge project, uh, the implementation of the National Natural Heritage. Uh, by now, it covers more than 160,000 hectares uh, in total. The first agreement about the transfer of the state-owned land to the Bundesländer was uh, signed with Thuringia. We have heard about it this morning. And uh, by 2010, all agreements have signed. And uh, so this land is given to the, to the Bundesländer for pr the protection of the green belt. And just now, in addition, uh, we are transferring uh, another 500 hectare of federal owned land uh, to the Bundesländer in the green belt. So the process is, uh, is uh, very wide developed, but there are still some activities. Next slide, please. Yeah, legal protection. Um, very important as we think we have, oh, please back one. We have uh, one uh, transborder uh, trans national park at the Harz Mountains, and by now four biosphere reserves. Uh, uh, fifth is uh, just in the process of being implemented. So we have some international relevant protected sites uh, along the green belt. But next slide, please. What uh, also is uh, mentioned by Minister in Siegesmund is the implementation or the protection of the entire run of the German green belt as national natural monument. You have to know, you must know that the national natural monument is a very strong protection category, it's closely related to the category of a national park. Thuringia started November 2018 with a, a national natural monument of 763 kilometers. We believe that it's the longest protected site in Europe. Um, and Saxony-Anhalt, one year later, uh, also uh, implemented the, or protects their green belt as a national natural monument. 
in Saxony and Brandenburg, these are the small dots. Uh, the process is uh, is now in process, and the last is the uh, green belt at uh, Mecklenburg for Pomerania, where there's also have been made some decisions on the political level to implement or to protect this green belt as a national monument. But uh, I think that will take some uh, one or two other years uh, to to succeed. So next slide, please. But it's not only the big uh, protected areas that are very imp important. Uh, the green belt works like a pearl chain with a lot of smaller pearls too. Here you can have an example, uh, a smaller part of the green belt, and you can see a lot of uh, nature reserves and Natura 2000 sites are close related to the to the border. And if you look at the entire run, then you will see in the in the border area the the number of protected sites is uh, much higher than in the surrounding countryside. Next slide, please. So I also mentioned the idea of a national network of uh, connected habitats, national ecological network. Uh, you will see here an example ma map for the uh, important forest sites in Germany and the forest corridors. And you can see this uh, yeah, semi-blue uh, stripe, which is uh, the green belt. Next slide, please. And there is a part of this picture, and you can see that the green belt fits very well into this national ecological network. But nevertheless, there are some uh, gaps uh, here, two pictures. And we are running together with BUND, a project at the moment, uh, to close gaps and also to connect the green belt uh, to other uh, protected and uh, ecological important sites on both sides. Next slide, please. Yes, I uh, already mentioned our project, large scale conservation projects uh, in many times and many places. Uh, you need to, to do some action. We just saw the, the example of the gaps, but there is also some deficits in management and so on. Uh, so since the 1970s, our, our ministry uh, supports uh, huge projects all around the countryside um, that is operated by our agency. By now, we already uh, funded uh, more than 83 projects all over Germany. The average pro project size is around 5,000 hectare, or I can say 500 square kilometers. And uh, by now, more than 500 million euros have been spent for these projects. Our annual budget is 14 million euros, million euros, excuse me, please. And seven projects, um, from the past and uh, actual running are connected to the German Green Belt. So the federal government not only gives land that has been owned by the federal government, but we strongly support uh, these projects. Uh, the money can be spent for uh, stuff, but also most uh, money should be spent for to buy land to close gaps and so on. Next slide, please. Yes, it's only one single example uh, where the, the here at the Elbe River, the dike was very closely uh, connected to the shoreline. And with the money from this project, some uh, 40 square kilo, uh, four square kilometers of former riverine forests could be uh, uh, regenerated and uh, so the now it is part of the flood the natural flooding regime of the Elbe and on the map on the right side uh, the uh, blue dots uh, indicate the projects along the German uh, green belt so next slide please yes uh, public relation work is very important to um, yeah, for, to address 
a lot of stakeholders. I cannot uh, go into details here. We did a lot of thing, uh, things. Uh, you you so stop, please. Uh, we you saw some examples from press tours to uh, exhibitions, being part of a touristic trade show, and so on. Regional conferences, and as you can see here on these pictures, there is a lot strong cooperation in this terms, especially with uh, the BUND. Uh, who is our partner uh, in these activities um, since more than uh, 20 years by now. So next slide, please. Yes, you can also find a lot of a number of publications. Uh, uh, back, please. Uh, a number of publications uh, that uh, begins uh, by scientific publications about uh, some scientific re research along the green belt. Uh, it covers uh, some uh, film material. And you can see there Kina Chu. It is a special magazine for school kids with uh, about the green belt, which was being printed uh, in several in several 10,000 copies by now. And it is um, used by teachers uh, to uh, yes, for for his uh, teaching the children about the green belt because, as you you know, uh, the the reunification is more than thirty years ago, and all the younger people don't have own experiences on uh, on uh, the former situation. And if you have a brief look to the right, there you can see Mrs. Merkel again, but. Uh, below her, you can see uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, the former uh, president of the USS USSR. Uh, yeah, and um, he also supported this idea. So um, public relation work is very broad and very necessary. Next slide, please. Yes, um, uh, experiencing nature is one tool in public relation work. We had a huge project and there are several smaller projects. Uh, I, I have uh, structured it uh, using the, the normal senses human beings have. Uh, you will be able to feel and smell by walking and hiking along the green belt. You can use your eyes not only uh, on in terms of uh, looking at the landscape, but there are several science folders and electronically informations you can uh, get on your smartphone. You can uh, listen to guided tours or uh, reports from uh, contemporary witness. You have uh, outlooks and watchtowers, and you can also get in touch with the nature by, for example, work camps and uh, management activities. And uh, there's a lot of idea of inspiration by land art projects. So you see a, a broad range of ideas to bring people together with the idea of the green belt, addressing all the senses people have. Next slide, please. Yes, and as I pointed out later on, uh, the Green Belt uh, should be a living monument. Uh, and there are also several activities have been done. It started by historic workshops. We are in cooperation with uh, border museums, or there are interviews with contemporary witnesses. And the preservation and reconstruction of border relics is, relics is very interesting. Uh, and some places we chain, we reconstructed the border towers into bird watching towers so that they uh, receive a new function, but still are, are there as a, as a historic site and monument. Next slide, please. Okay. I'm uh, close uh, to the end and uh, we'll talk a little about lessons learned. The German Green Belt has a very high level in terms of all common components of the biodiversity and also addresses a lot of bio ecosystem services. I had not the time to go into detail in this, 
but it's also very, uh, very important. It is a living monument and it has a high value in a region for experiencing nature and history. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, some ideas uh, to, to looking at the uh, Korean DMZ. Uh, we, I have some proposals. Uh, we have discussed them several times. First of all, you have to campaign for substantial political support. I think it came clear from the presentation before my presentation that there is a, a huge lack and it's a, also maybe a huge problem in Korea. You need to receive the awareness in the public. It must be uh, recognized as a good idea by the average people. Then, uh, especially in terms of other ideas of development, like industry, agriculture, whatever, it is very important to uh, the, the legally protection is very important. And this protection should be on a high uh, national level. Um, one uh, example, you also already tried it, is uh, uh, to, uh, in terms of an international status to uh, preserve it, uh, the whole entire run of the uh, DMZ as a biosphere reserve. Um, I think it's also important uh, to have some money to support the development of the uh, DMZ for nature conservation, but also for uh experiencing nature to have a sustainable tourism they need a strong financial support and you have also to fight or to uh, discuss with uh, other stakeholders who are interested in an economic development uh, to find uh, good solutions uh, that uh, will not destroy the natural values of the dmz and that is our experience from Germany. Uh, the, the DMZ should become an objective of a broad cooperation of GOs and NGOs. I know Kai Vogel will address uh, this uh, part, this very important part of cooperation through the last 20 years in his presentations uh, after I have finished. So. Next slide, please. And it is the last, last slide. I say Gamsa Hamnida for listening. And um, I have a very, very strong wish. I would like to see the DMZ develop in a similar way that uh, as the Green Belt does to develop it as a, as a green borderline for species and ecosystems, but also as an inspiring uh, area for the people. Thank you very much. Uh, the concept of a living monument as a leisure, national leisure monument uh, sound great. In Korea DMZ, uh, there are uh, many a uh, living monument also. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Tom, um. So the next speaker is the kind of the founder of a European Green Belt. So the Germany, So the Uberiken made a presentation on the concept of the German Green Belt, and uh, Germany and other European countries try to expand this concept of the Green Belt into uh, Europe. It is longer than the it is longer than the uh, wall of China, and including the Russia and other countries. So the, he will make a presentation on uh, European cooperation in terms of the European Green Belt. Is it possible to present? Um, yeah. On my, yeah. You, you see the screen? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, where screen? Yeah, OK. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, oh, I, I, there's an echo. Could you please check it? Or hear you me un, without an echo? So please give Hi. me a reaction. Hast du vielleicht uh, Kopfhörer? Nein, vielleicht ist ganz normal. Um. Hi, du musst auf Originalsprache umschalten bei Dolmetschen. Ah, auf, off. Moment. Um. Ich sehe das leider nicht. Bei Interpretation um, unten neben Record und dann einfach auf Off. Moment, sagen wir es bitte nochmal. Bei Interpretation, das ist neben Record, also da drauf drücken und dann steht bei mir Englisch, Korean und Off, also nichts. Und ich habe auf Off gedrückt. Ja, ich, ich sehe nur, seh nur Englisch. Hm. Hört ihr dieses Echo auch? Hörst du dich denn noch doppelt? Ich höre mich doppelt. Okay, weil ich höre dich jetzt auch nicht mehr doppelt, seitdem ich aufgedrückt habe, wie Herr Regen gerade gesagt okay. hat. Okay, äh, Marie, kannst du bitte die Teilnehmer in Korea fragen, ob wir mich ohne Echo hören? Wir gehen zum Munji in Abayo, Echo Ro. So there is uh, some technical issues, uh, so the echo is created. Oh, Miss Marion. So can you hear me? Can you hear me? So the call profile, there is uh, some howling on the speakerphone in your room. Okay, it's chicken again, Okay, so can I start? Oh, yeah. here's the echo again. <laughs> um, so I need uh, some information if, if you hear me in Korea without an echo. Or I can uh, start my lecture also if I hear an echo. Send him. Jetzt kommt er wieder. Oh, there is no okay. echo. Yeah. Don't worry, yeah, continue, fine. please. Okay, thank you. Sorry for the technical problems. Dear ladies and gentlemen, it's nice to see a lot of experts and good friends, at least over the screen. I am a representative of BUND, Association for Environment and Nature Conservation, Germany. BUND is with its 650,000 members, one of the leading NGOs uh, for environment in Germany. I'm involved in the initiative for the Green Belt since uh, 45 years. And as an extension of the German Green Belt, I would like to present to you the development and status of the European Green Belt. Both projects are also successful because government and non-government organizations work very well together here. 
On the left, you can see now uh, a peaceful trail in the landscape, the green belt, Germany, formerly the foremost border fortifications of the GDR. The former inner German border was a horrific dividing line where many hundreds of people were killed and which tore families and regions apart. And this inner German border was part of an iron curtain that divided not only Germany, but all of Europe for over four decades. <clears throat> BUND is a driving force of the European Green Belt, the preservation of natural values along the former Iron Curtain. This is one of the world's greatest nature conservation projects. The European Green Belt runs along more than 12,500 kilometers from the Barents Sea at the Russian Norwegian border, along the Baltic coast, through Central Europe and the Balkans to the Black Sea. It's a joining vision of European cooperation and it connects 24 countries. The European Green Belt consists of wilderness areas. Here you can see an example from the Fennoscandian Green Belt, the Kitka River between Finland and Russia, unspoiled tiger forests that ne have never been used by humans with many endangered species but they are also valuable cultural landscapes or coastal areas or lakes. An example from the South, Balkan Green Belt, Lake Skada, border area between Albania and Montenegro, the largest natural lake in Southern Europe. They are unique landscapes of memory, which combines nature and history. The goal of a 12,500 kilometer long protected area is a very big task, but it seems solvable. There are already over 40 national parks along the former Iron Curtain, and there are already 3,200 protected areas along the line. In a one kilometer range along this line, 47% of the area are already protected. The origins of the European Green Belt go back to the 1970s. It was then that the first protection efforts between Finland and Russia began. In 1989, the Green Belt Germany started. The first cross-border national park between Austria and Hungary was designed in the 1990s. In 2002, the BUND and the BFN called for the vision of a European Green Belt for the first time. And in 2003, the first Pan-European conference took place in Hungary. 2014, the European Green Belt Association was founded for the implementation of numerous activities. The coordination structure of the Green Belt Initiative has national focal points and um, National focal points are from a GEO and regional coordinators from NGOs. Because of its large, large length, the responsibility was divided into four regions, Fennoscandian region, Baltic region, Central Europe, and Balkan region. Three of these regions are coordinated by NGOs, one from a Nature Conservation Foundation. It's a prime example of the cooperation of GEOs and NGOs. 150 NGOs and GEOs of 24 countries working together on a European vision. In 2013, the EU Commission appoints the European Green Belt a model of green infrastructure in Europe, and 20 countries sign the Memorandum of Understanding. Our long-term goal, which we want to achieve together with the European partners, is a designation as UNESCO World Natural and Cultural Heritage. The requirements of World Heritage Sites are outstanding universal value and that a protection and management system is in place. This may, may be also important for the future of the DMC, 
it's a, it needs a good protection status first, only then is a World Heritage status possible. We are striving to be designated as a World Natural and Cultural Heritage uh, since the European Green Belt, in addition to its importance for nature conservation, has the same high value for the recent history of Europe as the heritage of the Cold War. Therefore, we make this demand together with the German Cultural Council. Uh, you see the logo on um, the left upper side, the leading association of all cultural associations in Germany. Now, with the nomination, individual states can begin with the nomination, the others follow one after the other. The German federal state environment minister supported this vision in 2019, as Uwe Ricken mentioned. BUND is currently preparing a proposal for the next German nomination list together with the Thuringian Ministry of Environment, the Ministry of Mrs. Sigismund. You will find more detailed information about the different steps in the symposium book. It will be a process of many years, maybe even decades, with close collaboration between nature conservation and culture and with historic or memorial branches. There are about 1,100 World Heritage Sites in 167 countries worldwide, but only 39 mixed sites, nature and culture. Uh, you see them in red dots, uh, nine of them in Europe. And in green, you see the European Green Belt, one of the few nature conservation projects that would be visible on a map of the world. In the European Green Belt, cooperation between geos and NGOs plays a central role. This is also based on experience with the German Green Belt, which is five times longer than the DMC, but, DMC, but the core area is much narrower. There are differences between the former inner German border and the DMC. For example, in Germany, border fortifications were only on the eastern side, in Korea, on both sides. Um, the importance for nature conservation, for example, of the Green Belt only became, na became known nationwide after 1990. The DMC's value for nature is already, I think, well known in South Korea and internationally. We didn't have a state master plan or a concrete concept for nature conservation along the inner German border before unification, apart from BUND's vision. In Korea, a state concept would now make really good sense. But there are also many things in common. You see here a rare wind chat loud singing on a border post of the GDR, a symbolic picture, nature knows no boundaries. And heritage of the Cold War, living monument, or from death zone to lifeline, numerous terms, images, and descriptions that are nearly identical for Greenbelt and DMC are used in the media. For decades, the Greenbelt Germany has been characterized by the cooperation between GOs and NGOs. Here you see some examples, common mappings, conferences, projects. Um, and altogether, BUND, together with BFN, has been carrying out, on behalf of the BFN, numerous research and implementation projects for decades. For example, Greenbelt Experience, Greenbelt Gap Closure, a total of 31 projects with a volume of 35 million euro. Of course, there are programmatic differences between official and association nature conservation, but given the great amount of resistance that nature conservation has from outside, I think it is right to join forces on positive projects. It, are, it is also part of the understanding of democracy that the state and society work very well together. 
the, BN, the main task of BUND um, are lobbying for the Green Belt at all political levels. We do, we do nationwide and international press and media work for the Green Belt. We raise private donations. We own the trademark rights for the logo of the Green Belt. We carry out environmental education work, excursions, exhibitions, lectures um, uh, on site on all places of the Green Belt. We are a nationwide documentation, documentation center for the Green Belt with a lot of photos and files. We network with around 450 partners in Germany, media, state ministers, municipalities, foundations, farmers, universities, and so on and 22 staff members at the BUND department Green Belt work for the Green Belt at the moment. And most of the media reports on the Green Belt are made via the BUND. The annual press reports range from 200 to over 400. And we have made a lot of representative surveys and uh, they show that the Green Belt in Germany is the best known nature conservation project in the country. 33% uh, of the respondents are familiar with the term Green Belt, an increase of 13% over the past 14 years. In the regions directly on the former border, every second citizens, citizen knows the Green Belt. Usually less than 1% of German citizens know about individual nature conservation projects. And four fifths of the surveyed citizens are in favor of protecting the Green Belt. Example of a, yes, a great media success, a special postage stamp from the German Postal Service in 2020. I think today the Green Belt is a national symbol and an international lighthouse project in Germany for nature conservation and has been supported by almost all parts of the politics also for decades. Or a nice example this year on a national holiday, the Day of German Unity at the beginning of October uh, this year, Google advertised this idealized green belt. Um, so as a, the, it's not really, uh, um, um, not, not the right green belt, but uh, it looks like the green belt. An example of the good cooperation at the National Nature Monument already presented by Uwe Rieden. The very complex legal protection was the task of the federal state, such as Thuringia. But the BUND Thuringia took over the whole accompanying public relation work for the citizens. In both cases, I like to mention two environment ministers from the political party, the Greens, were the central initiators. Without the immense personal commitment of Mrs. Sigismund and her colleague, colleague in Saxony-Anhalt, this historic success for the Green Belt would not have been possible. Thank you again for that. Now, the protection status at the moment of the Green Belt Germany, 80% are now under protection as a natural monument and the other uh, states are planning to follow as Uber Eden also managed, mentioned. Since there are already many nature reserves in the remaining countries or federal states, there are already nearly 99% of the Green Belt protected today. A protection status on the entire Green Belt was the aim of BUND in 1989. It took 30 years. As an environmentalist, you need staying power and patience. So finally, I would ask you to let me give five recommendations based on three decades of work for the Green Belt, which is so similar to the DMC in many ways. First, in case of growing rapprochement and reunion of Korea, which I wish you really from the bottom of my heart, 
nature conservation should be the first priority in the DM set. For example, as natural national nature monument or national park. Let nature have its way in the four kilometer wide core area as a wilderness area and start the preparations now. Use DMC as a chance for green infrastructure. And please expand the existing biosphere reserves in the CCC. Secondly, an old traffic infrastructure, infrastructure is rebuilt in the case of reunion. Roads and railway lines crossing the DMC should be carefully planned and whenever if possible as tunnels or with green bridges without destroying the DMC futures. Green bridges are often used in Europe in the last two decades and function very well. Allow me a comment as BUND, we are deeply concerned about new road plans, such as the Munsan Dorasan Expressway in the Yangdan Peninsula wetlands, or the decreasing area of the CCC. In case of reunion, preserve as much of the border fortifications as possible. One of the main problems in Germany is that the former border is hardly visible anymore. Unfortunately, virtually all fences or watchtowers were destroyed immediately after the opening of the border. Don't make the same mistake. If the DMC is meant to become a memorial landscape for future generations, these structures need to stay visible and link the DMC to ecological sustainable tourism, offer peaceful experiences for recreation in nature, for example, hiking and cycling. Look also for a very good cooperation with historians, monument conservationists, and the Ministry of Culture, also as a basis for a UNESCO World Natural and Cultural Heritage. And last point, strengthen CCC as a model region for sustainable development. Very important are cooperation with local people and NGOs and the support of local farmers, for example, for organic farming and sustainable habitat management for rare species like the cranes. Establish new state funding programs, so-called ecosystem service payments for this purpose. Such funding programs exist in Germany very successful for over 30 years. And please designate additional biosphere reserves in the CCC. So a uh, concluding remark. An intensive scientific and political exchange has developed during the last 15 years between Germany and South Korea, between Greenbelt and DMC. And therefore, I would like to thank the organizers for making exchange possible once more day, once more today. The European Green Belt and the cooperation with South Korea and DMC will be a major future task for the BUND. Despite a distance of over 8,000 kilometers between our countries, a lot of common work unites us. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. You uh, emphasized uh, several times in your presentation the importance uh, of uh, trustworthy cooperation between government and the civil society. Uh, today, uh, in here, uh, many delegates of NGOs uh, are together. Thank you. Uh, Kai Prober 교수는 1989년부터 So the, he argued and initiated the concept of the Green Belt in 19... 
80, and also the, he has a lot of efforts to uh, build the green belt and expand it to Europe. So now, I think that uh, we need to take a ten. If we take a ten minute break, we cannot. I think that uh, I think that uh, if we take a ten minute break, we cannot finish the, this symposium as planned. So that's why we don't have a break. So we don't have a break. So if you have urgent issues, please uh, use this toilet in a very quiet way. So the, now I'd like to invite the next panelist, the agriculture counselor from the Dutch embassy in Korea. And the Netherlands has a lot of experiences of uh, the cooperation in terms of the biodiversity. So that's why we invite her. Please. In your seat. Yeah, yeah. So good afternoon. My name is um, Gela Renader, and I'm the agriculture counselor from the Dutch Embassy in Seoul. And um, it's just easier to say that I'm the agriculture counselor, but actually I'm the counselor for agriculture and uh, nature and biodiversity and species and forestry and fisheries and food security and everything all the important things I would say. So uh, in the Netherlands is also the Ministry of Environment um, takes care of other things like infrastructure and canals and so, and the Ministry of Agriculture and Nature is the one that takes care of these kind of uh, issues. So I'm very happy to be here. Um, it's a little bit difficult to, um, to actually structure this, th this presentation that I want to give because I have so many things to share and we have been through so many of these kind of meetings in different fields when I worked for biodiversity and nature, when I worked for migratory species, when I worked for agriculture and fisheries. So there is a lot to learn. I'm very happy that um, you presented the video about Germany. So I don't have to do the same for the Netherlands. It looks exactly the same. Um, it's green and just all those farms. I felt like the video was made from the Netherlands. And also for me, it's a very emotional uh, session because I do remember when I was 10 and the curtain between East and West uh, Germany um, came down. Please don't calculate my age. Uh, it's not necessary. So, um, so this is for me, this is for me um, like reliving uh, what happened back then. And also I had exactly the same, um, I had exactly the same feeling when today I came here for the first time. Um, also one other thing which is very special for me personally is that I am from the city of The Hague, which is where our ministry is and where our king is in the Netherlands. And the symbol of The Hague is a, is a crane. So we have a crane on all the poles on the street um, everywhere. And when we have children, the municipality gives a little crane to our children. So it was, and it was the first time I actually saw a real crane. So this was for me very special. Um, so I want to make a, a small presentation. My presentation is actually something totally different than what we've been discussing today. Um, I, had, I have so many ideas. I was also looking at what we did in the Netherlands because we also have like a green corridor 
uh, in the Netherlands, which is a zero emission road that we are using. And we are using that for ecotourism. It's an old road that nobody wants it, wanted to use anymore. So instead of destructing it, and we are very flat, just like what I saw in DMZ, um, we use it as recreational and as cycling. You know, so, so many ideas of uh, possibilities. But before I go to my presentation, there is one thing that is even more important than where we want to go. I think the question is how we get there. That is very important. And I'm so happy to see that the Korean government is actually spending time and bringing um, the stakeholders together. And we went through so many stakeholder discussions. And I can tell you by itself, it's a complete art. It's not a one time talking to each other. And I say one thing and you say another thing. No, it's over and over and over. And the most important thing that I have had in these kind of consultations, especially when we did um, Natura 2000 areas, those are also protected areas, but those are protected areas that we are already using. So we, for example, we have Natura 2000 on land and we have it in water and our fishermen were already fishing in this area. And then suddenly we said, or the European Commission said, we want to make this a protected area. You're not allowed to fish here anymore or there are very strict fishing regulation. So the difference is it was already being used economically intensively and then suddenly we had to make a change. And how do you make those kind of consultations with the stakeholders and telling them I am going to do something with what, is what you have been working with. And I think the most important thing is to switch to have the fishermen or the landowners really try to be in the shoes of the NGOs and vice versa. So what we saw, it sounds a little bit idealistic, but what we saw at the beginning of all those consultation was, uh, you know, we are very outspoken. You are more like gentle and talking very politely to each other. But at the beginning, we saw lots of arguing. And then after many, many months and many, many consultations, we saw NGOs and fishermen or those landowners having coffee together. And actually NGOs supported the landowners and told the government, no, you, you are making too many strict regulation for those landowners. You shouldn't do this because this is their livelihood. This is this, this is this. So it was using the power of the other party to unite and to work together. What I see a lot of times is that landowners and NGOs, they feel like they're opposite each other. It's not true. Only they can work together when they're thinking like each other. Like I think, what would I feel if this was my land and what would I want to do? So that is the first thing. And what I want to do, very short presentation, I just show you the pictures because I like the pictures. Not that many pictures, pictures, but uh, about the policy. Can I have the PowerPoint, please? Um, I want to talk about the agriculture. Uh, we have an agriculture policy in the Netherlands, which is nature inclusive agriculture. So I saw a lot of agriculture land and developing this area is one thing, but the agriculture, using the agriculture ground as it is right now by itself while conserving nature is something that we have as a policy. Uh, do I have the presentation? Do they have the presentation? I don't have it here, but I have sent it. Do you have the presentation? Yeah, there's the presentation. Okay. You can use it. Yeah, I can, if, if they, do they have my presentation? No, no. no. They don't have no. it? Okay. So I will just explain a little bit it's what we do in the Netherlands. It's we have a policy for agriculture, which is called circular agriculture or sustainable nature inclusive agriculture. And what we do is at one point we thought that this is the way we are using our land uh, is not very sufficient and it's not very, um, very useful. So basically what we decided to do is we said we don't want to keep producing or using our land like this. 
you know, the Netherlands is a very, very small country, extremely small. You cannot even find it on the map. Um, and then you might be surprised that we are the second biggest agriculture exporter in the world. So after United States, we are the biggest. So how is that possible? Because we, uh, we were producing a lot of food and we are exporting a lot, but we are not being sufficient. So we decided to change because we also have to change the way we think about future. So if I was a farmer, for example, I was not thinking only about producing today. I was also thinking about how my children are going to produce, uh, how their children is going to produce. Uh, today, maybe the water I can use for the, for the farm is cheap, but if we use it in the same way, it's going to finish and it's going to be very expensive. So my next generation cannot produce any food with cheap water. They have to pay a lot of, lot of price for it. So we changed the way we thought and we did that together with farmers and with NGOs and with other governments. This is, I think, a very important thing to be able to understand that no matter what you do in this area, it needs to be in a sustainable way and it needs to be using your resources over and over again. Because it is a very fertile area I saw here and if it is not managed in the right way, in no time, uh, the land is not good anymore for, is not as fertile as it is. So there are many things that we can do, but of course there is not enough time to discuss all of those things. But I want to, I want to say that I think that we are going, oh, it's okay, I'm almost finished. I already did the presentation. I almost did the presentation. It's okay, I don't need to do it anymore. Let's, let's I don't need to, I don't, because the time is finished. Yeah. I just did the presentation, yeah. Yeah, so you can see on the picture, I will not go into the presentation, but you can see that for us, it's, don't go away. Uh, it's, it's the circularity. This is the most important thing. And I am very happy to see that um, you're talking to our German colleagues about their uh, Green Corridor experience. And uh, I wish you a lot of luck. And I, I cannot say anything anymore because our German colleagues already did all of the recommendations which I, could to, I wanted to give while I'm giving this presentation. Uh, so I think actually what I just said was better than the presentation I made. So <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. So, well, actually, we could not um, do, well, share the file with our engineers because we received that later. Sorry for that. So actually, later we are going to have a further discussions. So we are going to invite a speakers later to share more ideas later. So Miss Marian. Yeah. 혹시 한국에서 보여줄 수 있나요? Presentation. 한국에서. So the can you? Upload my presentation. Production and thank you to all preceding speakers and panelists for the great presentations today. It is really a great honor um, for me to be here and speak to you and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, this topic is very dear to me. Next slide, please. So Anja Sigismund, Minister, she used a very inspiring phrase to refer to a personal relationship with the Green Belt in Thuringia. Next slide, please. So the word Herzensangelegenheit. 
So in German, this is one word. In English, I would translate it to affair of the hearts or matter of the heart. 그리고 한국말로 표현하려면 uh, 마음을 가장 움직인 것이라고 할 건데요. Frau Siegesmund uh, used it to describe her relationship with the green belt in Thuringia. So this is her Herzensangelegenheit. And the DMZ and the cooperation with the German green belt is my Herzensangelegenheit. Because I am half Korean, half German, I have a Korean mother and a German father. And the relations, the linkages between Germany and Korea have always deeply moved me. And one part of this is the history of the vision, of course, and the unification. And with my profession in ecosystem management and conservation, the DMZ as an important biodiversity hotspot for Korea and the world has evolved to be my Herzensangelegenheit. So today I'm supposed to talk about the linkages and considering the time and that we already heard some great presentations, let me only point out a few things. Next slide, please. So I would like to start with a perspective um, of conservation. And actually, there are some surprising similarities. So Germany and Korea, they both lie in comparable climate zones, as well um, as sharing the same plant kingdom and biogeographic realm. So the ecological underlying conditions are similar, which also leads to astonishing similarities uh, from the perspective of conservation. For example, South Korea and Germany are important pathways for migratory birds. Uh, and also they both feature mudflats, so warden seas. And some of the conservation efforts target the same flagship species, such as fish otters and cranes. And here, I just want to give an example about the cranes because I think it's very important. Uh, within South Korea, Cholwon is the large refuge for several crane species, uh, including half of the global population of the red crowned cranes, uh, which here uh, are wintering in Cholwon alone in the below picture. And while this has caught the attention um, of the whole province as a new source of income through tourism, there also needs to be a delicate balance with conservation efforts to ensure the preservation of Korea's last refuge for cranes. Um, in Germany, um, in picture above, uh, the cranes actually rest in a few locations, just like in the Netherlands. Um, so for example, in Pomerania, so the Vorpommersche Bodenlandschaft Nationalpark, this is a long word, um, is a, a national park at the green belt at the Baltic Sea. So here, the green belt can serve as a role model to learn how to find the right balance between ecotourism and conservation. In the area of this national park uh, at the green belt, ecotourism has become an important device to create income for the residents. And also in Germany, we have a lot of experience working with the farmers through contractual nature conservation. So contractual nature conservation is um, a German mechanism for payment for ecosystem services with farmers. You can conclude this, this national park is a perfect case study for Korea in Sholwon. In a recent survey, actually 93% of the residents of this national park in Germany stated that they support the strict nature protection measures. So in Germany, we can see now that the residents that were before opposing nature conservation measures have become supporters of the green belt. And I think there's a high potential to learn from each other. Next slide, please. And not only the biological factors are similar, also from the point of the underlying state system, both countries are democratic countries with wealthy economic systems of industrial nations. So there are similarities in the pressures of human land use. In South Korea, the protected areas are fragmented, as you can see in the slide. And in Germany, it's actually also similar, but we have this green belt. So I think in the developed states, Germany, as well as South Korea, one defining task of the future will be to shift towards sustainability, um, to achieve the SDGs and become carbon neutral. And the DMZ and the Green Belt are a unique chance. In Germany, um, we already heard from um, Dr. Uwe Rieken, 
how important the green belt is to connect the biotopes from north to south, in the middle through Germany. And in South Korea, there's also already some kind of north-south corridor through the mountains, as we can see on the map. However, these are all very similar habitats, so very similar ecosystems. They're all mountainous ecosystems. The DMZ enables a new ecological network of very different biotopes and ecosystems from the West Sea on, uh, of Korea to the East Sea. And um, this would also include very important biotopes in lowlands of Korea. So wetlands, grasslands, and lowland forests. These lowland forests have become very rare in Korea. So the DNZ is uh, all in all a blessing in disguise for boosting the ecological value on the Korean Peninsula. So next slide, please. Uh, when, with a closer look at the border concepts, actually there are also some differences as we have heard before from Kai Throbel. Um, starting with the sheer dimensions of the Green Belt and the DNZ in South Korea. As we heard earlier, the Green Belt was only on the GDR side, on the east side, um, as this communist state was trying to prevent their own citizens from fleeing. The DMZ is distributed on the north and South Korean side, and in total four kilometers wide. Actually, it's also a lot older than the Green Belt, uh, with a longer natural su succession of the plants and therefore with a high ecological value on its own. If you then add the areas within the CCZ, this is really a great opportunity for sustainable development and safeguarding biodiversity for future generations. Okay, next, oh, I just want to slide uh, to, to, to highlight one of the biggest difference and it's this time factor. In South Korea, we are before any sign of unification and we can learn from the already unified Germany and Greenbelt, especially from the mistakes. If political action is taken in South Korea now, before unification, we even have the chance to build some kind of better Greenbelt. So before German unification, as you can see on the picture, there were no restrictions on the West side, leading to a complete land use in the West Germany. Only through the hard work from a few dedicate, dedicated people, such as Dr. Kai Frobel, uh, it was proven that the border had a high ecological value and the nature protection was actually realized in a very quick reaction when there was the chance right after unification. In Korea today, we, have the, we already have enough evidence for the ecological value of the DMZ. Also, we have these complete business cases from Germany showing how nature conservation can provide income and also benefit the residents. Um, also, in South Korea, we have the financial power and legislative framework that could enable the protection of the DMZ or areas within the CCZ even before any unification starts. So I think we will need more political will and public awareness and I hope that if we show uh, and share experiences from the Green Belt uh, in Germany with, for example, the residents or the broader public, there will be also more support. Okay, next slide, please. So just very quickly in the end, let me summarize briefly some of the key lessons learned from my personal view. And I think there's a lot of overlap with uh, Kai Vogel. Uh, first of all, um, I want to say avoid any fragmentation or future gaps in the DMZ. Kai Ophobel already mentioned how important green infrastructure is. So also for everything that is decided between um, North and South Korea in a peaceful dialogue, this needs to be thought of. And also any concept that only covers part of the DMZ, like the Peace Park idea will not be sustainable in the long term, as it diminishes the ecological integrity of the region. Second, to legally protect the DMZ in case of unification uh, and strengthen legal basis of nature protection in areas within the CCZ. So this is to establish an ecological network within Korea. And there will be pressure on the industrial states to take responsibility and to safeguard biodiversity. For example, at the next convention on biological diversity and uh, the new UN Global 3030 targets. 
So I think uh, this is very important. Next slide, please. Third, um, this is also something I wanted to mention, make the border region more accessible for citizens and lift the restriction on military protected areas. Um, I think this is an important point because we have seen in the case of the German border, um, the whole green belt was entirely on the east side and there was nothing on the west. This was also a strong sign to show that the West was actually part of the free world. And South Korea is also part of the free world. There is no risk of South Korean citizens to flee to the North. And therefore there is no immediate reason to restrict these areas. Whenever I spoke to the residents near the DMZ, accessibility was always one of the main concerns. Of course, this point is only set with the condition that nature protection must come first. And I think this is also the area where Germany can provide a lot of helpful guidance and also case studies. In my point of view, um, for example, creating this living monuments, this careful balance with nature, as well as ecotourism and the former mentioned contractual nature conservation with farmers. Last but not least, I wanted to mention the cooperation with North Korea. Um, I know that in recent times and through the pandemic, it was very hard and the North-South relations have been very difficult. And this has shown how important is, it is to start the action for nature protection independently on South Korean side on, and leading by example. But in the future, it is also important to engage with North Korea when possible, for example, uh, at international conferences. And this is also an area where Germany could play a key role as facilitating the dialogue. And also at this point, I just wanted to say to my uh, German colleagues, we should keep that in mind. OK, so let, last slide, please. That was it for my slide. Um, thank you so much. 정말 반갑습니다. 그리고 다음에 정말 실제로 만날 수 있었으면 좋겠습니다. 감사합니다. So the next time I really wanted to see you physically. So this mic is on. Is this on? Can you hear me? Thank you. And she live in Korea and she visited the DMZ. So she is able to compare uh, the DMZ of Korea and Greenbelt of Germany. So she proposed uh, some other biases. And now we will invite the next panelist. Hwang Wonju, Dr. Hwang Wonju, working at the National Natural uh, Trust, and she will make a presentation on nature preservation area. 네. So we are a lot late. So I think I should make a presentation very briefly. And also the yesterday National Institute of Ecology shared very important information about their past research activities. And I think we had a meaningful time to look into those research outcomes. I prepared a few the visual materials, but the Professor Progel and Ms. Marion and the director the we can have uh, some level of understanding about DMZ, so let me skip some part of my presentation material. So this morning, and we visited the Hwasalmuri site, so I had um, the mixed feelings um, visiting the site. Uh, we also look into the site 
where the remains um the under discovery so i believe many of you share the same feelings like me this morning so ministry of environments i think should have a strong de determinations it is crucial to have a collaboration between different ministries so anyhow the ministry of environment should have a strong determination and strong willingness so that we can proceed the our plans further um, the, we are on the um, kind of the treaty uh, the peace treaty but well if something goes long in the North Korea, we can have a sudden changes. When I see the German case, I could see any sudden changes out of a sudden can happen on the Korean Peninsula as well. So I have uh, some concerns as well. But based on our willingness, we cannot resolve all these uh, the challenges the faced in this the well, DMZ area. So what I want to say is Ministry of Environment should provide more determinations and also there are many stakeholders and experts in this place and there are many activists in this place as well so that we can collect our strengths together and collect our wisdom together so well we can make uh, some changes and eventually we can make uh, some contributions of sustainable development goal SDG by United Nations as well. So these are some pictures from Korean War. So this uh, the pictures delivers uh, the many messages indeed. So you can think about the past of Korea from these pictures. So this slide is also about the DMZ area. Um, the speakers from Germany have um, the great understanding about this. So. I do not need to give a further explanation about that. So CCL, the civilian control the line moves um, the northern way. So we have some concerns regarding that. So DMZ uh, should go for the smart use and also conservation and preservation so rather than the compact developments. DMZ has a great ecological values and yesterday National Institute of Ecology shared their research findings and the reasoning that presentation we once again realized that DMZ is the treasure of this ecosystem. So today, about 200 and the cranes and they visited the Choron area. So I was so excited watching crane. So about the 50 percent of the uh, the population, the Korean population, is visiting Korean, visiting Choron area ladder. So that is a very encouraging sign indeed. So, well, for that aspect alone, we should protect the Choron area. So this is uh, the main topic I'd like to deliver. The Ministry of Environment earlier um, they talked about this. In the 1998, um, the Nature Conservation Act was um, the enacted and that specified which area will be well under preservation. And when it comes to the developments of DMZ, and actually, they can be initiated uh, once this uh, the area, this uh, the jurisdiction can be under our control, and that is only valid two years. So it is uh, very difficult to implement certain the projects uh, in earnest. But we can have a uh, different interpretations about these areas in very flexible way. We can have uh, interpretations, and we can have a uh, better. Uh, the approaches. So according to this act, only two years are available, but within two years, we can cannot make uh, big changes. We cannot have uh, the political measures for two years, so we should have a uh, different the approaches. So rather than we have um, the passive interpretations, we can have uh, active interpretations. Well, according to this act, only two years is um, the valid after jurisdiction is uh, under Korea control. 
but before we have um, the control over jurisdictions, and if we can establish plans earlier, then we can uh, utilize the two-year time more effectively. So, well, even though we do not have um, the proper control over the jurisdictions, and uh, well, necessary plans can be established, so all the preparation measures can be made in advance. And well, we, if we have to establish plans within two years, then we do not have enough time for implementations of those plans. So that is a very limited time and a tight time. So we cannot have any valid result out of that. So what I want to suggest is we need to have a more active interpretation about this act. So I want to share a lot of messages regarding this slide. So the northern part and the southern part of TMZ. So those are the areas. Um, well, have uh, some the ownerships, but there are many the land and which does not have any the specific ownerships. And well, when we have um, the world, actually the land ownership system can be shaken. So after world, new the land ownership system is um, the established. So well, there are private land in the DMZ as well. So they can be used as um, the meaningful infrastructures by establishing proper the land ownership in DMZ areas. It is important to have um, the proper the ownership systems, and we should have a more um, the precise approaches regarding this. So the Dr. Kai Profile shared the encouraging the messages and ideas, and thank you for that. In the DMZ, uh, there are um, the large portions of the private uh, their land. Because of that, I had a great concern indeed because um, of the well, private landship. Um, the ownerships. It is um, difficult to implement certain policies, but we can have a step-by-step -step approaches, and also we can have um, the out-of-the-box approaches as well. So, well, we can have um, some the well future the possibilities to use this. But if we cannot uh, change the land ownership systems uh, completely, then we can establish a special act. And based on that, we can also go for the common land system as well. So that can be one kind of options. We can refer to European cases as well. So well, before in European countries, some land ownership was um well actually um went to back to the nation through the restitution programs, and that they can be well considered in Korea as well. And also DMZ area can be well recognized as um, the natural the monuments as well. Um, due for this, the regulation should be revised in Korea, but there is a possibility regarding this end. So we can consider that. Um, well, the, we can have um, the great hope to have um, the hope for the next generation. So DMZ can be the land for exchanges between North and South Korea. So after the war, the land system um, was uh, shaken in Eastern European countries, and also the East, the Germany, a, well, after the Second World War, the land uh, system has been the changed. And after Second uh, Second World War, so Germany was uh, under um, the well control of the Soviet Union. And 1989, with the collapse of the Iron War, there has been also the changes regarding land ownership system as well. So there has been great conflict regarding this uh, land ownership. So still, this um, the conflict goes on on to today as well. Uh, the land, uh, some lands are owned. Um, the by the private sector, but that uh, ownership shifted to the public sector. There has been, and well, the changes uh, a lot uh, in the European countries regarding the land ownerships. So anyhow, how we can resolve these uh, land ownership issues in the MZ? That is uh, pressing the problems indeed. And we can look into the European cases in order to resolve the land ownership uh, problems in the MZ. So last. 
in my presentation, um, what I want to emphasize is how we can resolve this, the deadlock, uh, the situations regarding land ownerships. So the Article 2.13 of the well, the Conservation Act that should be eliminated, that should be removed, so that we can the, have our plans for the natural conservations, and we can have our more programs in order to develop and conserve the TMZ. So comprehensive TMZ, uh, the conservation and preservation, the plans can be established, and also, well, as I mentioned, we can actually consider natural common system in order to um, the, well have this uh, land ownership give this and uh, land ownership to public sector there can be greater contributions um, the TMZ can have regarding the ecological values and yesterday and today we have a discussions about these values in the year 2013 we will introduce the concept of um, the ecosystem values and in the year 2016 we had um, the well Asian Congress and also we had um, the great uh, the effort in order to spread that ecosystem and eco service idea but a few days ago there has been revision of the act so Ministry of Environment has a strong will and also people have a better understanding about the ecosystem service as well so there can be changes so well we have um, the land site here in order to implement some programs we have been designed and we are inviting stakeholders including the farmers and the local community members so anyhow these stakeholders have a greater contributions and I believe there should be some return to them when they um, well actually chip in their effort so well I'd like to work with um, stakeholders as well and the Secretary General make a great effort in order to have a better exchange with um, the local community. Taking this opportunity, I'd like to express my sincere thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So the Ministry of Environment uh, plan to finish this symposium at 6.20, but uh, we are really running late. So there is uh, some uh, issues of the Zoom, and then we already promised to finish with this symposium at 6.30, but uh, I think that it's not possible, so I Yesterday, we had uh, discussions, and then Kang chan Su, the journalist, the Kim sung -woo, uh, the working at the, um, uh, the Ecosystem Solidarity Organizations. So the, now I'd like to turn my microphones to them. So Kim sung -woo, will make uh, some kind of the comments on the presentations of today. And he is the leader of the Eco Peace Alliance of TMZ. And then the Director General of the Environmental Movement Coalition of Korea, Jung Myung Hee, will make a comment. And then the Kang Chan Su, uh, the journalist, will make a comment. So good afternoon. I'm Kim Sung Su. I'm the leader of the Echo uh, Peace Alliance of the TMZ, and I'm a citizen. So uh, I wanted to make a comment from the point of the TMZ. So I think that I wanted to share my opinions on the future of the TMZ. So for the last 20 years, so many people have uh, studied on the ecosystems of the CCL area. And then for the last 20 years, the government has changed, the administration has changed it, and also the public servants have changed it. So the, nowadays, each ministry of the government try to uh, do something uh, to prepare for the reconciliation. But I think that this kind of the plan of the each department, each ministry is not well organized. 
What is the reason? I think that the government should have cooperated with the citizen civic societies and the German people will make a presentation on, on the importance of the cooperation between the public and private sector. And also, it, is, it shows the level of the democracy of each country. So, of course, that the Korean government all the time uh, tell that we need to build and improve the public and private partnership. But in actual reality, uh, and actually, uh, the implementation is carried out by the government. It's a unilateral uh, implementation. I think that uh, in Gyeonggi province, the situation is uh, very serious, and the Paju is much more serious. The reason I think that I think that uh, these kind of the plans are not well organized and they are not well coordinated. And of course, that the each government has a plan, and the government has a plan by receiving some kind of the advices from the organizations. But the experts, but the sometimes uh, that, uh, but the sometimes the opinions of the citizen science. So the citizen science were excluded from the process of the government to make uh, policy. So actually, the general people are the target and the beneficiaries of the those kind of the policies. Until now, the government is just focusing on the opinions of the only experts, not opinions from the citizen science so the and also the public officers all the time says that uh, I cannot do anything as an excuse so the sometimes the public officers don't work hard but just to say I cannot do do anything it is a kind of the excuse so sometimes I feel frustrated but I think that the cooperation is required, and but the to have a cooperation, uh, each player, each player see uh, the same thing and the, see the same direction. For example, the public officers have a similar opinions from the citizens, and sometimes the public officers uh, think that they are they have a high power than citizens. So the, if so, we cannot achieve the cooperation. So the instill in Korea, uh, because of the patriarchy, the public officers ha think that they have a high power uh, than uh, the citizens. It's a problem. And also the government have uh, some kind of the plans and the policies, but those plans and policies are not well organized, and also uh, they are implemented individually and separately. That's the problem. So that's why the citizens and the activities and the citizens scientists cooperated to uh, the some echo peace alliance of the DMZ and actually these activities and the citizen scientists uh, really love the species and the animals but uh, there is a very rare uh, cases there is a rare opportunity for them to uh, tell their voices and also it's a very difficult to, to make their voices heard by the government so I think that still we have uh, some problems of the communication uh, between the uh, citizens and the government so the cooperation is essential it's true but uh, to have a uh, cooperation, the government shall believe in the private sector. But uh, in the past, uh, the government invited uh, some experts because that. Uh, um, so, but the uh, so people said the government to say that uh, civil society and civic groups has less professionalism. But nowadays, not now. Some people of these private organizations are the doctors, and then they write the papers, and those papers are introduced as a very excellent magazines. And also, the local residents have a high knowledge as well. And also, the local residents know uh, the solutions and so local residents know the reason, local residents know the situation, and the local residents know the solution. So I think that the government just follow 
uh, the opinions and government just try to accept opinions from the local residents. But uh, still, the government doesn't uh, listen to uh, the voices of the local residents. So it's a problem, I think. I think that the local residents and the activists are the most important partner of the government. So the, because they know every, almost everything in the, in the situation. So that's why I think that the cooperation between public and private sector is very important. Uh, to this end, the government must believe in uh, the private sector. So the central government, or local government, and other uh, municipal uh, municipality try to reach out uh, to the citizens, and also they try to listen to the voices from the citizens. So that's very important, I think. Thank you. So hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Chung Myung Hee. I'm from the Environmental Movement Coalitions. So many the NGO activists and also the local community members are here. So in the year 2012 and to the 2019, I was involved in the activities, so environmental activities in Paju City. So I'd like to share some of the experience from Paju. In the year 2012, the civic groups and the organized in order to have um, the research and survey works in Paju City, together with uh, environmental experts for about six years in Imjin River area. And we had um, the environmental impact work from the developments. So we could stop the well development plan, and actually, the Dr. Prabel talked about the Munsan and and the Dora San, the Dora uh, the station areas. Actually, you remember that. Thank you for that. I remember you visited there, and the Paju DMZ area was visited by many readers and and uh, look into many different parts of the Paju DMZ and also recommended that this can be recognized as a Lamsar website site uh, based on that ecotourism can be planned so economic uh, the benefit can be earned from that. So in the year 2018, and the t Mr. Tillman Hoyer also visited from Germany as well. Uh, so the Ms., uh, Mr. Kim Chun Hee from the Environmental Movement Coalition joined um, the him to have um, the kind of the tour the site. So DMZ a site can be recognized as um, the international uh, the agreements in order to have a better protections. So we actually raise voice about that. And also we organized some event in order to share the German and the experience. Back then we had um, the Dr. Kai Provel and he actually shared his ideas and recommended there should be master plan for the, um, the use of DMZ. And also it is uh, important to, to have a collaboration between and the Germany and the Korea. And in his presentation and uh, well he said Said uh, the well, Bund can have uh, the some um, the expectations regarding these collaborations. So I also have a high expectation as well. The well, smart use and also well, the use uh, that uh, puts the conservation at the center. So we should implement such plans. And there are many collaborations between North Korea and South Korea. The feasibility study is uh, exempt. And also Munsan Dorasan Station, that uh, project is uh, exempted from the feasibility study as well. So the basic um, the act should be changed. And also, well, in the morning, we visited ice cream um, this site as well. So I'd like to share some the reflections to my visit. 
I could see some many artificial the parts there. When we look into the DMZ, we could have um, the opportunity to share the landscapes. But when we enter the bunker, there has been the many items at the exhibited. We could not have uh, any opportunity to have um, the peace in the mind. But I only had um, the noise pollutions and the light pollutions, and I want to get out of the bunkers when I visited there. So the I hope that uh, many stakeholders who gathered here and also local community members, please um, the, raise your voice in order to have um, the more natural the images in this the Choran DMZ, rather than to have uh, many the exhibited items. So it will be quite a good opportunity to initiate our effort in DMZ. I want to share more, but time is limited. Thank you. Thank you. So the last but not least, Kang Chan Su, the journalist. So actually, he got a PhD of the microorganisms before joining the uh, media company. So actually, I think that the microorganisms is not connected to the DMZ well. But uh, uh, in 2017, I covered the story of the DMZ. And also in 2013, I visited uh, Germany to uh, look around the Green Lisbon with uh, John, Dr. John. So 10 years ago and 20 years ago, so the people uh, started to talk about the DMG issues, but until now, uh, there is not that much progress, I think. So I think that uh, we have to think about the combined the bottom-up method and top-down method. So the government also announced uh, that uh, carbon zero policies. So carbon neutrality policies. So the, maybe if the president, as you know well, the, if the president say carbon neutrality, after that the, all, almost all of ministries uh, started to prepare for the carbon neutrality. So that's why I think that the top-down method is sometimes required. Uh, and also bottom-up method is uh, required too. So the, I believe that the local governments must cooperate each other, in, especially in border areas. And also, I think that uh, next year we have a presidential election. So the, we, the, I believe that the local residents and the local communities in this border area cooperate to uh, Coron on the presidential candidate to make a pledge on this TMG conservation and protection too. So I think that uh, in 2010, the Chuang Daily newspaper uh, asked some uh, the president candidate to uh, connect the uh, echo axis, but. Uh, I think that uh, this year, all the time, almost all the people think about that and say about the climate change. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, I think that uh, we have to integrate the ecosystem issues of the DMZ into the climate change if possible. And also, uh, as you know well, the, some areas are damaged in, within the DMZ too. So the, some areas, the forest fire was set in some areas within the DMZ. Uh, so that's why I think that uh, maybe uh, we don't know the when the reunification is achieved, but uh, maybe we need to develop the scenario so-called reunification plus 30. Thank you. So, well, actually, we are behind the schedule, so about 10 minutes behind the schedule. So, well, we said we are going to wrap up this conference by the 30s. So, well, we should wrap up this conference first. And if we want to have uh, unofficial meetings, um, well, actually, additional the well, agreement will be required for that. Uh, and uh, Miss uh, Marion Consultant, uh, thank you for your consideration and the cooperation for our DMG. Uh, 
uh, today uh, there are uh, no special uh, questions to our uh, foreign speakers. However, some. 지금 그런데 답변을 들을 시간이 없을 것 같아서 야. So actually we cannot have um, the Q&A time because we are behind the schedule. Uh, Korean environmental movement uh, confederation. Uh, Kim Chun Hee, yeah, uh, have uh, uh, some questions. However, uh, to my sorry, uh, our time is uh, over. So uh, later, uh, I will deliver you uh, the questions by email or uh, by a, a watch up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, please uh, say goodbye to uh, our participant, uh, Dr. Uh, Director Dr. Uberiken. Yeah. Please one one comment, please. A comment from my, my yeah. side. Yes, uh, I would like to say thank you. I one more second, please. I have to say thank you uh, very much for inviting me to this uh, interest, very interesting symposium. Um, I've, I've learned uh, a lot about the politicians and the political situation in uh, Korea in terms of the DMZ, and that is for me, it is the key problem that has to be solved. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, thank you, yeah. And then, uh, Professor Dr. Kai Prober, please. So, uh, thank you for this conference. And uh, my thinkings are that in South Korea, you need a clear commitment exclusively for nature conservation in the DMC and sustainable development in the CCC from the government at the highest level. It's not so good if different ministries are working not together. So you, you need this uh, decision. And let me uh, give you one experience from Germany, because I think there are a lot of hopes of uh, um, yeah, people from the industry, for example, that in the DMC or in the CCC, uh, you get a lot of highways or uh, business parks and things like that. And in Germany, immediately after the reunification, the peripheral regions along the former border hope to become a center of the new United Germany and develop into a highly industrialized booming regions. And their expectations have not been fulfilled. The expensive economic rehabilitation of Eastern Germany was immediately focused on the former industrial cores and urban centers. And I think it can be assumed that the same will happen in Korea and therefore the rural areas along the DMC should prepare concept for an other environmental friendly form of development. Thank you. Thank you. In Korea, uh, there are many activists and specialists who remember you. Thank you. Yeah, last one. Uh, Marion, Marion, she's in Korean. Korean. So, could you deliver the last two messages? Oh, no curse, please. <laughs> So, well, even though we are on the online platform, and it's uh, my great pleasure to be part of this symposium, this was um, the learning opportunity indeed. And as the earlier speaker mentioned, um, the, well, we still have some issues. For the last few years, we made um, uh, well commitment regarding TMZ preservations and conservation, but still we are uh, um, making the great um, the well conflict, so political issue is a uh, one stumbling block, and also the participation from local communities, and that is uh, another important uh, the aspects. So it is important to invite 
uh, the local residents and hear what they have to say. So that is a crucial issue indeed. And regarding that, I learned a lot. Well, it is difficult to say in Korean, sorry for that. But anyhow, if opportunity allows and we can meet again, we can have in person the symposium so we can share more ideas. Thank you. Thank you. So, Dr. Prober and uh, Marian, uh, for a long time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, bye bye. <laughs> bye. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, So now we'd like to wrap up the today's symposium, and then now I'd like to turn my microphone to the public officer. And then this, from now on, is a kind of the informal uh, discussion. So the Gellard Nader has uh, talked about the importance of the relationship between uh, between uh, the, the public officers and also uh, the local residents. And then she all the time emphasized that the importance of the relationship between local residents and the government. So the YouTube is, the air is not stopped now. So the, from now on, we will close the official symposium.